Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to our Iowa caucus show. We are here in Des Moines, Iowa. It is, I think it's like, what, negative 15 out right now. We've got the uh, Iowa caucus results trackers pulled up, but we still have, I think, it could be an hour before we know exactly who wins and what's going on, but there's a lot of interesting data that's coming out. So we're going to talk about this. There is a lot of news that we'll probably get into as we are waiting, but we have a lot of awesome guests. And uh, in the news today... Of course, the Iowa caucus is taking center stage. Donald Trump is the huge favorite expected to win. But there is a shocking new poll showing that among first-time caucus goers, Vivek Ramaswamy actually is leading. Nikki Haley's in second, and Trump is in third. I don't know how much that will matter because the core base of voters are not first-time voters, so this should get pretty interesting. We've got massive escalation in the Red Sea, which could lead to uh, serious conflict, crisis, and war, higher prices. So we'll talk about all that. And a bunch of other stuff. Um, we'll talk about the airlines getting woke and going broke. But I think a big focus of today is going to be on the strategies of these political campaigns, who's going to win, why they're engaging the things they are. And of course, Donald Trump versus Vivek Ramaswamy is big in the news right now. So we'll get into all that. But before we do, my friends, this whole production brought to you in Iowa is powered by Based Records. That's B-A-S-T-E Records. They got a bunch of awesome artists. You may be familiar with Five Times August. That dude is amazing. We've had him on the show before. Follow them on Twitter, at Based Records. That's like based like basting a turkey. And uh, I really do appreciate it. They helped put this whole thing together. I've been, I've been, I was just telling everybody, it was insanely expensive to be able to pull this off. So we're going to do the show tonight until uh, we normally end around 10 and do the members only. But the members only is not going to be members only tonight. We're going to bring in audience Q&A around 10 p.m. Eastern, and we're going to go for about 45 minutes where we have a hard stop because we have to fly back on our very expensive private jet because that's what we do. That's the only way we're able to pull it off, but we do have a deadline to get out of here. So um, it should be really interesting. And we're going to have a a, a lot of awesome people. So also go to TimCast.com. Click join us, become a member, support the show because that's another way you can help make all of this possible. This show is powered Thanks to people like you. You also get access to our members-only Uncensored show content. You've got the Discord server where you can hang out with like-minded individuals. It's a lot of fun. We really do appreciate your support. So smash the like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends. Joining us tonight to start off the show, we got Benny Johnson and Alex Brusowitz. Take it away, whoever wants to. What's up, Benny Johnson? And, um, you know, you can subscribe to my OnlyFans. (laughs) (laughs) I I hope it's worth the money. It was. <laughs> take the glasses off. <laughs> that. That's hot. Hey, hey, hey. hey, that's for subscribers only. Who are you? What do you do? For those that might not know, uh, news and politics and culture on uh, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitch, Rumble, Kick, other platforms that I'm X, and so forth. Well, all right. All we got around, Alex. Alex, what content. are you doing? He's blowing up, by the way. I mean, this guy gains more followers than anybody I know on a daily basis. He's crushing it. But I'm Alex Bruzowitz. I am a semi-professional Twitter troll and a professional full-time disimp crusher online. And, uh, you know, I'm excited for a big Trump victory tonight. Right on. We've got a couple other guests. We've got a bunch of people who may be jumping in and out. I don't know exactly who may be showing up because there are a lot of people who have expressed interests. But um, we are uh, – uh, we have been under the impression the whole time, and I just want to make sure this is clear – Vivek Ramaswamy should be joining us at some point in the night to discuss strategy, what's happening, and so we're excited for that. Of course, we had him uh, uh, on the show on Wednesday. We did a big town hall with him, but considering how hectic the night may be, we have no idea how it may turn out, especially considering the roads are covered in ice and it's like minus 15, but the plan is to have him around. We also got the uh, uh, the crew here, of course. Luke Rukowski's hanging out. Hey, guys. My name's Luke Rukowski of thebestpoliticalshow.com, and because of Bidenomics, I'm also selling on blank blank for 7000 uh, a load there. If you want to find out what the blank says, go to thebestpoliticalshirts.com. We also have Seamus here, who just uh, came out and crawled out of the tunnels in New York City. Good to see you, brother. Hold on a second. So, Luke... <laughs> <laughs> Were those Irish tunnels, though? It's <laughs> deeply Irish, yes. It's unbelievable. By the way, Luke was eating seed oil. How dare you? Oh, wow. I caught him. And Tim can vouch for that. It's, it, well, I caught him because I saw Luke yep. sitting on the couch eating a cracker, and I recognized instantly it was a Belvita cracker. As from he the came out of his it. tunnel. Wow. And I was eating a, a, a beef stick. And then, I, and then when Luke With got soy. up, with soy, you you had a soy. Stick. There's no soy in there. You, you had you had what red five, red two, red three. Oh, it was horrible. Gross. That was yeah. red three. Yeah. That, that stuff's made from yeah. coal tar. Yeah, that's, that's right. I I, I, I I confess there were preservatives and coloring and corn syrup in my beef stick. Ooh. But Luke was eating seed oil. Couldn't preserve Luke's reputation. What do nope. you eat? Uh, going, going around, what about your your two sprite diet? Anti-sucrups. How about that? I, 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 you want to talk about I, I, your your, your horrible diet? I put extra seed oil in my diet. All right, I put extra seed oil in my poisonous fluoride drinker. Hold on, I own the IQ. Can I please introduce myself? the tunnels used? for? Uh-huh. Yeah, answer the on. question, Seamus. What were, were you doing okay, in the tunnels? Guys, we're moving on. 
I actually they, legitimately want to know. This is I I am I am I am fed up. We're moving on. Seamus did, however, drink two sprites and had a piece of chocolate cake. <laughs> oh, as man. he was sick. Anyway, not sure. Seamus, why. Seamus, um, are you with uh, My name's Seamus Coglin. Uh, I'm a cartoonist, political pundit. I have uh, a podcast on Rumble that's on hiatus right now called Shamer. I also have a YouTube channel called Freedom Tunes. We upload a new animated cartoon every single week, and I'm a co-host on Shimcast. That, that's right. I'm uh, I'm Ian Crossland. I have been eating very healthy while we were in, we were in town. I drink a lot. Of, I've been drinking a lot of hot tea, chamomile. That was nice. Caffeine, low caffeine. They're classy gentlemen. Hard, to eat, hot tea. hard to eat healthy in Iowa. I've got a bit of a well, buzz in my headphones. Hard. Hopefully it's not too distracting. We, we went to the Big Steer. Do people, everyone from Des Moines know, know what that is? I, Luke said apparently like everyone. That, I found that place. I did uh, uh, deep dive research Yo, into it. You come to Iowa, go to the Big Steer. Absolutely. That place is awesome. Best ribeye in town. Man, the, the was, seafood was, was top notch. Super good. Delicious. This butter, this like melted. Did that have enough seed oils sauce. for you, Luke? No seed oils. <laughs> no, the dressing they made in house. Uh, Ian yeah, asked about it. They were like, "Nope, it's legit. It's cream. It's like garlic." But now that we've talked about a bunch of nonsense, let's talk about the news. All right, here's the first thing I got pulled up for you. This is actually really funny. The first thing I want to mention: we have the New York Times Iowa caucus results queued up. <laughs> for those that are here watching live, you can see it. We have on the screen right here. But what do you notice? What do, you, what do you notice in their uh, default breakout of the uh, candidates? I notice our buddy isn't there. Who wants to, who wants to say it? Yeah, no Vivek. On the Vivek is not included in the New York Times default breakout. You have to then click view all candidates to bring him up along with Chris Christie. I thought he dropped Asa out. Asa Hutchinson and Ryan Binkley. Yeah, yeah. Christie did drop out, yeah, but he's still okay. on the ballot. Dead ass. Yeah. I don't even know who Ryan Binkley is. Binkley. He was the Binkley. first person he to do the full Grassley this cycle. He did all 99 counties. And, uh, did he really? He did. Oh. oh, wow. Is he still running? Uh, no, he, subs- he suspended his campaign, but I think he still has a few folks going to caucus for him. And Really? And yeah. Hutchison's been out for a while. No, he's still in. He's still in? He's still in, yeah. Wow. Yeah, he's... Okay, uh, well, that's kind of depressing, but, you know, more power to him, I guess. One percent. Oh, is he really? Chris Christie dropped out, but I, I do love that uh, Vivek is not included in their default breakout of the, of the total reporting. Should be interesting to see what ends up happening because of that. It was the same with CNN and Fox. News. Yeah, apparently what, what Fox... So we did, we did uh, a ride-along with Vivek today, and he showed me, like, a screenshot from his Fox News hit this morning. He's like, what's going on, guys? Like, what is this? Oh, and he, it, he pointed at the screen, and it just showed... It's a three. poll. Yeah. It was a poll of who are you caucusing for, and yeah. they did not include his name. Yeah, but the right. weird thing on CNN is when you clicked uh, the link and went there, it, the big article was Vivek's face. <laughs> I don't understand what was going on. I think if you go to CNN right now, and it'll probably just show you Vivek. I guess that's it. But I suppose the, the, the big news and the big questions we can start talking about right now is Donald Trump versus Vivek Ramaswamy. This is like the big subject. For the longest time, everybody's kind of wondering how it is that Vivek is running against Donald Trump, but there's no fighting. And so we actually got to the point where I think it was Dave Rubin who tweeted that Vivek, uh, he, he's, I, I, I don't want to get him wrong, but Dave said something to the effect that Trump is working with or for, or I'm, sorry, with, uh, I'm sorry, Vivek is working with or for Trump or something like this. Yeah, that was a big narrative that was being pushed by uh, the DeSantis camp for, for quite a while. And, um, you know, I think Vivek was smart for, for a long time for not taking shots at, at President Trump. And uh, he, he kind of stayed above the fray in, in that fight. Uh, but President Trump certainly doesn't enjoy when people use his face or name for, for f- you know, financial purposes. And uh, those T-shirts that Vivek was pushing with the safe Trump vote Vivek message, I think that was a little, um, I think that upset a few people, including President Trump, and rightfully so. Uh, President Trump has never liked when people use his name. He even sued little Mac Miller over the song Donald Trump. And so... Uh, I think that was a, a rookie mistake made by Vivek, and it happened at an inopportune time for the guy. Yeah, so this is the story. I just Google searched the image. India West is the source. I don't know what they are, but this image is real, and it's Vivek with a group of young men, and they're wearing shirts that say, Save Trump, Vote Vivek. Look, man, I like Vivek. He's a, he's a good dude. He's a smart guy. He's a hardworking guy, but this, is, this was a mistake. This was, it's a, like, was a big mistake. I understand the, the, the message, like, okay, Trump's his life is at risk if the deep state really wants him to not be president that they'll stop at nothing I get that but like to to rely on that as a campaign message is a little lame like you got to be the best candidate not like oh that other guy's a problem so vote for me instead that just doesn't fly it doesn't it doesn't sustain my opinion Show yeah me why I, I mean look Vivek has a great thing going as if the deep state does really stop at nothing and and, and go after Trump and let's not even explain like the worst that could happen, we're going to be happy that it's not just Nikki Haley waiting in, 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 the, in the bleachers. Yep. 
so and that was, make his around. That was the argument that I overheard as he's doing radio interviews all day uh, with uh, Alex Jones, Bongino. He was like, the argument, the, I couldn't hear Alex Jones or Bongino, but you could tell they were like, Trump's going after you. Why would you run with this stupid shirt? And his argument was, Alex Jones, you just did 20 minutes. We just did 20 minutes together on how they're going to assassinate Trump. <laughs> oh, jeez. So then what happens next? And Bongino, you just did a whole interview where you and Tucker talk about assassination of Trump for 30 straight minutes. Yep. So what do you, what do you think is going to happen next? Game theory that out for me. So I think that's, I, I, I don't think that's smart. I don't think that T-shirt's smart. But that's the, I think, the strategy, the, the thought yeah, process the, the behind it, right? The, the T-shirt yeah. is cringy, sure, but I thought Trump's response could have been better. I think he could have been a lot smarter about this situation. His statement today uh, made more sense, but he could have reached out to Vivek. He could have uh, sent out a message saying, hey, I don't need saving, thank you, uh, without kind of uh, the dividing a lot of people. As, of course, uh, you know, Don Jr. was here just a couple days ago, and, and he talked about how we don't have a bench. And this kind of infighting I don't think is, is productive, and I think it, it could have been handled totally different in my opinion well it is politics and vivek is running for president against against trump and he has stayed out of uh you know kind of the firing lane uh the entire cycle so far that's true and this was really his first hic uh, hiccup and mistake i think of the campaign and uh you know president trump is a fighter by nature and he typically doesn't hold back saying things that are on his mind and uh, that was probably the first thing that came to his mind yesterday. And so he put it out. And, you know, look, I think a lot of us do like Vivek. A lot of us do think he has a future in the movement and a future in the party. I don't think it's uh, this year. Uh, but I do think, you know, he's a young guy. And uh, when we're talking, looking at our bench down the future, I think Ron DeSantis st stepped on a landmine this cycle and has no future after this. I, I think yeah, a lot of people totally saw agree. his Man. response. Uh, and, and I think some people took offense to it because they kind of saw it as punching down. And, and they saw it as infighting. And, and, and to me, that's how just some people react to it but um you know again it's a crazy situation and um a lot of people want it handled handled differently i think the only either. smart i think the only smart move here quite frankly is for trump to release a save vivek shirt <laughs> that would have been yeah that would have been a meme real, that would have been funny that yeah. would have been hilarious yeah, good that is good yeah. and be like i got you bitch right save vivek from <laughs> yeah. himself well, I, I want to make a point piggybacking off of what you said, Alex, um, with uh, DeSantis and the fact that he stepped on a li landmine here. It's just like fascinating to me them. because, yeah, th this is the first time I've ever felt that I liked a politician and hated their campaign. It's a very strange phenomenon. No. I mean— I don't even like the guy anymore. You don't like him anymore at all? F Sorry, but finish your point. Yeah, no, well, m my point was basically just that—and I, I, I've said this on the show before— I think that if Trump and DeSantis are both strong, that's great for the United States of America. I want both of those men to be as successful as possible. And then going up against each other in this cycle and DeSantis deciding to run has turned out to be a complete disaster for him and his campaign. And he ended up basically jumping headfirst into the politician wood chipper that is Donald Trump, I believe, to borrow the, the phrasing from Aaron McIntyre. And so there's a lot that DeSantis has done that I think is fantastic. I would like to see him have a strong future in politics. But unfortunately, I think his campaign has been a disaster. And I also say that as someone who's had friends work for him, people who I like, I think the people making decisions for DeSantis and with, are really not uh, trustworthy. And I, I think they're making bad calls. And this is the moment that I would like to uh, formally apologize to Will Chamberlain and Jordan, Land uh, and Jordan yeah. Chamberlain. Good, they're friends of ours. They're yeah. good friends of mine. Same. Will's, Will's great. A, Will's and, a good guy. And I Will's want to apologize because on the, on the show last week, I said that they were living in Maryland while working for Ron DeSantis, and that was not true. And so, Will, I'm really sorry about that. I didn't, I didn't know. I made a mistake. I read these articles. I, I, I assumed you were still in the area because you had been on the show earlier. But they were actually living in Florida at the time when they were working for DeSantis. So seriously, sorry about that, guys. I, I mean it. And when Will's the, one of the people I'm thinking of, Will's the man. Like I, I really like that guy. Yeah, I don't know how you get rid of Will, who's actually a smart guy, a competent guy, and then keep some of these other dumpster fires around. So, uh, yep. I, and, and, and this is what I said to Will: if they put him in charge, DeSantis would be polling way higher. Mm -hmm. He could be. He could have the campaign that Vivek is having. Granted, yeah. Vivek yeah. made this. I think this is a mistake Vivek made, but I still think he's doing really well. But I got to tell you, when I mentioned to you earlier, I don't even like Ron anymore. I got to be honest. It, it, Laura Loomer put out that video where she confronts him and, you know, it's, it is, I, I, I don't know how to describe it, but it is shocking to be confronted by Laura Loomer if you're, if you're some of these people, right? Mm -hmm. But a, a, a question that uh, um, someone asked and she also asked was, why are you in Iowa when your state is, is in a state of emergency? And I was like, whoa, I, I didn't even realize. I looked it up. Sure enough, there's flooding and a disaster going on in Florida. And not only did he come out here. But correct me if I'm wrong. I'm hearing that he brought out his gubernatorial his governor's uh, gubernatorial staff as well. Yes. And I was like, whoa, 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 dude, dude. 
this, this is not okay, okay? He, he would have earned way more political points by saying, I'm not gonna be able to, to, to campaign in Iowa, understand why. There are people who depend on me. I will never abandon the people who voted for me, people of Iowa, blah, blah, blah. Instead, he was like, I'm out. He flies in, flies out, comes here, and then goes to campaign in a blizzard where all the stores are shut down. We were walking around outside, and, the, and the, it wasn't even snowing very hard, but the snow had come overnight, and the restaurants are closed. Everything's closed, buried under snow. For what reason did he decide to come out here when people are canceling events? He, he actually abandoned his state during a state of emergency flooding and a disaster to campaign in a state that was dealing with its own weather. I was just, that pissed me off. I'm sorry, man. And weather that people from Florida have no idea how they have to deal with. Florida, Florida people don't know how to deal with ice and snow and cold. And yeah, as, as, as a, as a, What's the gator yeah. guy going to do a, up here, huh? As a person, yeah, that's right. Lift so, your legs when you walk. So two things. One, <laughs> and press Somebody down. Tell when Joe you Biden that. <laughs> <laughs> but can you lift your legs that high and boots like that? Is the question. It was Sorry, fun. Ben, I, got, I have big boots. They're like the big polar boots. The Balenciaga. Yeah, Baffins. Uh, yay. How big is the heel? It's pretty I'm, big. Oh, oh, they got their wedges inside. They give me about a good four inches. You know. <laughs> can I pull the audience real quick? <laughs> what do you guys make of a man that wears high heels in the campaign trail? <laughs> and that's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. I got a. I got a. Don't of, say that. I got a question for you guys. I, we were talking in the green room beforehand about um, basically the liberal economic order, most powerful force on earth, most powerful global government ever created. So if these guys, Vivek and Donald Trump, are saying like we're gonna, we're gonna disrupt it, my thought is okay. Well, then your life is on the line. So if you do win the presidency, you're gonna have to go into hiding or govern from like some secret location. And they were like, no, that would be like an abandonment. I'm like, but if you stay in contact with the people via internet video, be like, I have no choice but to be in a yeah. mountain base. What do you, do you guys think that's a good idea? You think it's unnecessary? What do you think? Going against the liberal world order? Well, I mean, they're talking about dismantling the FBI, which is essentially going against the liberal economic order. Well, so let's, let's, let's preface this a little Muscle. bit. I know there's a lot of people who are probably uh, more general viewers We've covered this quite a bit, but the liberal economic order is a system you can, uh, that was built after World War II. Ian brings it up quite a bit. It's a legitimate thing. This is not conspiracy theory. I know the media is going to try and claim it is. It's, uh, what is it, the CFR, the Council on Foreign Relations? They might be involved. It was started in 1949, Bill and uh, they were like, this is going to guarantee we don't have World War III. They built American-led rules-based economy is what they call it, and they built all these American military bases. They use American money, and they've been enforcing it. So they're like, these new people are like, we've got to create a new world order. This liberal economic order is no longer effective. We've got to create a new system is where they've been, like the World Economic Forum is starting to step in. But this liberal economic order is kind of now being siphoned into this new world order that they're trying to, this global bank banking thing um and so, so, trump so has been like a kind of was kind of a bull like he kind of when he when he canceled look, the 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 trans-pacific partnership you could see that he was not playing that game he was and, not going to sell out the united states right. well here's, here's a question i want to ask too because ian's bringing up this point if you're going up against the machine they will do anything to stop you and as you know you, you were just pointing out vivek was mentioning that alex jones dan Machino are talking about the potential assassination Tucker about, Carlson, Tucker all, Carlson. All, I mean, and and the joke everyone else has is that if Trump picked Nikki Haley as VP, he'd have to get a food taster because mm -hmm. they're going to want to get her in as, as soon as possible. But let's be real, too. When Vivek says, save Trump, vote Vivek, it's like, what makes you think you're immune to the same things? Right. If, if Vivek's really a threat to the system like he's campaigning on, you know, why would they why would the system let him in? And so like he has to. He needs to figure out that message before it lands, uh, because that doesn't make a ton of sense. Well, I just want to—I just want to add one more point before we, we move on. For me personally, there's a lot of things that are, are happening right now that we should be talking about. Specifically, World War III that we are probably in right now. The Epstein client list. Americans are fatter, sicker, and more depressed than ever. But we're talking about calendars and cringy T-shirts. The conversation should really be about the establishment versus the anti-establishment. This is where the conversation needs to be. There's a lot at stake here. And, and to me, we're, we're arguing over superficial issues when there's so much deeper things that we could be exposing right now, fighting for and talking about that, that sadly we're not talking about, which is kind of disappointing for me personally. I want to cover some of these issues. Um, I agree, Luke. The results are going to start coming in, but we do have some big issues, especially uh, Taylor Hansen is reporting on a really crazy issue we'll get to later in the show, where you've actually got police officers. They're off duty, but using public equipment to facilitate human smuggling operations on the border. Crazy stuff coming out of, this is Tenant Media, shout out to uh, Tenant Media, we have the show The Culture War with them, obviously, full disclosure. But uh, Taylor's got some excellent reporting we'll, we'll, we'll pull up later, as, as Luke points out, there's a lot of issues. But I want to talk a little, bit, a little bit about the caucus, two big issues. This is a new report from SCNR.com, shock poll, 
Majority of first-time Iowa caucus goers support Vivek Ramaswamy. Trump is in third place among this group with 29%. Surprisingly, I, th I believe it's Nikki Haley what? who has second place, right? Well, her, hers, her numbers come from first-time GOP caucus goers, and it's because she has a lot of Democrats caucusing Exactly. For her. Uh, and so this, okay. these are people that are not actually going to be voting for a Republican in, 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 the, in November. This is, the, this is a crazy thing. I saw, I think Mark Cuban tweeted this, calling for crossover voters, Democrats, yeah. to come in and vote for Nikki Haley, basically sabotaging the Republican primary process. Well, why, does yeah. the, why, does the party, why does the state party of Iowa allow that? Like, why does the Republican state party of Iowa allow that? But, that makes absolutely no sense. Here's a question. How long have you been in Iowa? About a we, week. Less a than week. a week. Yeah, you've less. met some people. You've gotten out. Mm -hmm. You went oh, yeah. to restaurants? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have you met a Nikki Haley supporter? Nope. No. Never. <laughs> Not that I know None. of. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's like meeting a dodo bird or a, <laughs> or a Joe Biden voter. Try, yeah, like try and capture, you know, try and capture one for science. Yo, yeah, well, science. Okay. What, what are you? It's, I've never, I've never, I don't know one. We've I've never met, seen one. Yeah, we've, well, we've met Joe Biden voters. We've never, I've never met a Joe Biden supporter. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, they voted yeah. against Trump essentially. Yeah, yeah, and and even like the leftists who are like, I voted for Biden. It's like, yeah, I don't like the guy at all. I just think Trump's a fascist or blah blah blah. But. I saw I, when I saw this uh, uh, thing from Mark Cuban where he's like crossover voters. You're saying why does Iowa allow it? It's really simple, man. Democrats probably a long time ago switched their party with the intention of sabotaging the primary. We we talked about it even in 2020. This is a strategy of having your people go to open primaries yeah. to choose whoever you think is going to lose or just to cause chaos and damage. Well, if it makes any of the folks in the attendance or watching feel better, Liz Cheney tried to do this in Wyoming and she lost by 40 points. She tried to get all the Democrats in Wyoming to register and vote for her. Um, I don't think it's smart that some states do it, but that's just the fact of the matter. It's, um, it's, but it's not about any state doing it. Even if you have a closed primary or caucus process, a Democrat one year ago re switches party affiliation to Republican waiting for the moment they can come and do this. So there's nothing. Yeah. There's, there's no way to stop it. It just means that Democrats are th there are a large percentage of Democrat voters who are lying to sabotage the Republican well, primary. Process. I would like to thank your program and, and, and what you guys do for sending your reporters to the Nikki Haley events. And she <laughs> has cl totally closed the doors to most conservative media. She won't allow cameras inside of her stump speeches. She's terrified that her speeches will get out there. And so your videos of like talking to the attendees and saying, yeah, I'll vote. They say, I'll vote for Biden before I vote for Trump. Mm -hmm. Like those are the first videos that were actually coming out of the Nikki Haley events this entire campaign cycle. So you guys did a great job on that. Well, that's a uh, shout out to SCNR.com. Elad Eliyahu doing this ground reporting. Elad does a great job. He, he doesn't go in. He's not yelling at people. He just li he asks him a basic question. Who are you supporting Nikki Haley? If it's not Nikki Haley, who will you vote for? And they say Biden. And their voters say Ukraine's the number one issue. Yeah. And, uh, you know, these people are, are not going to be Trump voters, and that's okay. We don't need them. But uh, the Vivek has been interesting. He's uh, attracting a, a new demographic, I think, to the party. And I think a lot of when he eventually drops out, I think most of his, if not all of his supporters, will come and vote for President Trump. Yep. Um, but, you know, he's a young, energetic guy, uh, and he attracts a similar type of person that President Trump does. Uh, but Vivek's team are, has really made an effort to go after the the young vote, the, like the 18, 20 year olds, and uh, you know the it's, Andrew it's, Tate it's, crowd. It's it's brilliant uh, going for the younger voter. I think Vivek's whole play is for the future. I do think the save Trump vote Vivek thing was was a huge misstep. But I think right now, and I'll say this too, because right now with the Vivek versus Trump thing, there's people are getting attacked online by, like crazy. You've got these diehard Trump supporters saying they're all grifters. Yeah, okay. Look, I'm going to throw some criticism at Ian Miles Chong because he posted that really deceptive image that was like mainstream media-esque where it's a very tight shot from the third row of a Trump rally and then behind Vivek at his whole room when apparently Trump's, Trump, Trump had like 2,500 people plus overflow and Vivek had 500 capacity. Like, let's not play those games. We don't need to do that. But there are a lot of people that I think are, are going hard after anybody who is talking to Vivek or, or interviewing him claiming that there's a paid coordinated thing. Totally not true. Possible. I don't know. Maybe some people are getting paid by Vivek's campaign. We didn't get anything uh, from Vivek, except I will say, full disclosure, the building we are in, Laura Loomer tweeted that we were in his campaign office. Technically correct, not literally correct. His campaign office is down the hall around the corner. I think that's fair to point out. We are in an unused portion of the building. We actually had to talk with the owner about the use of the space and, and what it meant. And I'm, I'm just going to tell everybody this. We actually, we were like at 
odds with the Vivek campaign because they're super noisy and we're trying to do a show, but I'm like, I don't want to disrupt someone else's campaign. Yeah, and they've given us full access to that office, which is where I got my tea, is in Vivek's campaign. They're being really nice Shout to us. Shout out so to Vivek's tea. He's being bought off good. by tea. That's right, that's yep. right. But <laughs> I want to make sure we're being transparent and, and, and clear with that. Yeah. But, I, but I also want to point out that when Laura point, uh, mentioned about being loyal to Trump, I don't think she articulated that very well. I don't like loyalty in politics. What do you guys think? No, no, hold on. I want to address this. This is the point why I'm bringing it up. There is an issue of being honorable and loyal to Donald Trump, and I agree with it. Now, let all the DeSantis people scream MAGA cult BS, whatever. No, I'll tell you what it means. It means I didn't vote for Donald Trump in 2016, and then I saw a president who started no new wars. I saw him set deadlines for ending these foreign wars, which the Democrats told me were all bad during Obama, but, it, but made worse. He brings the Abraham Accords. He negotiates with North Korea. All of these great foreign policy moves, some bad ones, don't get me wrong, but an overall net positive. And th the whole time, they're destroying his life. They're targeting his children. His net worth is dropping. Now they're trying to take from him his properties in New York City with a, with a, with a fraudulent trial. He's being criminally prosecuted across the board. I'm sorry, man. When it comes to the issue of loyalty, I can ignore policy and say, I'm not going to abandon the guy and vote for Vivek after this guy jumped in the trenches and caused himself personal damage to do good things for me and the United States. That's loyalty. Yeah, I, but that being said... Between Vivek and Trump, I understand Vivek's point about they're going to try and stop him. Agreed. However, Donald Trump has experience in his first term. I believe that if, if Vivek were to win right now, he would not be as effective as Trump in certain areas because he will step on the landmines that they laid out for Trump in the first term that Trump now knows about. So I, st I still think there's a logical path forward for why Donald Trump is the right person to pick. And I also think there's an, a question of honor and loyalty to a guy who's sacrificing a lot. Well, so honor, don't turn away from who you believe in because of fear. I agree with that. But I believe that we should be loyal to the process. And it sounds like you're loyal to Trump's process, which I understand. But if... What, do you, wait, 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 what does that mean? You're loyal to his actions. What he's done is like, I want more of that. I, I respect humans that do that thing. But if No, I, that's, that's not correct. You're saying all the things he did. It's not about like, I love the guy no matter what he does, I'm, I'll vote I'm for him. I'm saying... He, I'm saying you can ignore the good things he's done. That's, uh, that's, my, that's my point. If we take all of his policies and everything he did for this country and just put a blanket over it and say, the only wish, issue we are addressing is this man ran to be president, ignited a base, and they have been stabbing him in the back relentlessly. That guy made sacrifices for me. I won't abandon him. No, I don't so, like that. But to, I, 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 I think I hear what, where you're coming from, though. But and, and I think for the voters, I don't think the voters necessarily have to be loyal to a person, right? I think President Trump has earned a lot of respect and a lot of appreciation from the voters, and that's why they're going to vote for him tonight and across the country. But when, when Laura Loomer, I think, when she's talking about the loyalty, I think she's talking about people like a Ron DeSantis, who was a backbench Congress member until he got on his hands and knees and cried in front of Trump, begging him for his endorsement, <laughs> basically getting the coronation to become governor of Florida. President Trump worked with him, made sure he got in. He had rally after rally after rally. DeSantis was running TV ads, you know, basically saying, you know, I'm President Trump's number one guy. And you know, build the wall, reading Trump books to his kids, and he embraced right. the Trump brand to become who he is today. And then he totally ditched Trump uh, when it became politically convenient for him. And then you, when you look at some of these other influencers that Laura Loomer's in the trenches fighting online, simply built their audiences. Like I look at Tim different than I look at some of these other folks, like a Jenna Ellis, because Jenna Ellis built her audience off of the back of Trump supporters and President Trump. Tim built his audience on his own, doing his own thing. And so who he wants to support, he can support who he wants. But when you're Jenna Ellis or you're a John Cardillo or you're a Bill Mitchell and your content is only I love Trump for five, six years and just in the reply section defending him and all of a sudden you switch. Well, like I, that's where people like. Yeah, yeah that's, that's shit. Uh, I'm loyal. And, and their right followers here. left them in droves. Bill Mitchell lost 90,000 followers over the last you know, year because he became the biggest DeSantis shill, John Cardildo, similar situation. And so like, but that like loyalty matters to that, to that extent. But uh, I don't think the voters necessarily have to be loyal, but I think President Trump certainly makes a great case. I, I look at it, I'm again? loyal. Yeah, John Cardillo. I, 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 it took I'm, me a second, and then it processed. I'm loyal oh, okay. to the U.S. Constitution and the process of the American function. And if someone better comes along than the person I've been supporting for 20 years, I'll vote for the new better person. And if that person that I've been supporting goes crazy, 
they should step down and get out of the way so the next guy can come in. That's how our system's Ag built. Agreed. But, but and I, I don't I don't see that playing a, a role right now. Yeah, but yeah. I think the other question, too, is if somebody has been good for 20 years, how do you know that the person who's coming up isn't just good in rhetoric and they're actually going to be decent when they take office? Because that's one of the values, that's one of the benefits of having a political leader who has some experience is you're able to say, okay, I know what their track record is, whereas this other guy could have great rhetoric, but I don't know what he's going to do. I, I we, just, we, real, loyalty real quick, is in, like, military and monarchy. I don't think it has a place in republics. We got some numbers coming in. So uh, less than 1% of the votes have come in already. It is 7.30. Donald Trump is at 67.5% with 243 votes. DeSantis in second. Nikki Haley is in third. Vivek Ramaswamy in fourth. Is that good for Trump so far? Yes, it's good for I'm Trump. not good at math. Who's the guy that voted for Chris Christie? There's one Whoa. vote for Chris one Christie. Dude. Ryan Binkley <laughs> got a vote. His wife voted for Ryan Binkley. Who's They're no, in split house. <laughs> okay, hold on. His wife voted for Ryan I'm, I'm real sorry. Asa Hutchinson's still running, you said? He's yeah. still running. And he yeah. got zero, and Christie uh, got one? Still. He's still in the race. Yeah, wow. That's still in the race. I'm sorry. Okay, so hey, look, if I, if I were caucusing tonight, and I'm from Iowa, and I've caucused before as an Iowan, I no longer live in Iowa, I live in Florida, I would not be caucusing for Ron DeSantis. I'd be caucusing for Donald Trump. I fully expect to vote for Donald Trump in 2024 in a general election. My issue with the whole, my issue with the whole, what Alex is talking about, but then also this whole like loyalty argument is I think at the root of it is we injected money into the influencer world and were able to flip influencers in a very cringy way. Talked a little bit about cringe political campaigns here. And uh, I'm not going to name anyone, but it's fully available for everyone to see online who's getting paid. It's also fully available in FEC reports. You can go check who's on the payroll of which campaigns, right? Yeah. I mean, big name influencers, you can go find them. All the reports are public. And I don't like that. You getting paid, I, Luke? I, uh, I wish. There where, were some people where, that shocked my me. Money at? DeSantis is paying people. That that shocked me. I couldn't believe wait, wait, it. When wait, I, do we publicly see who he's, who he's paying? Riley Gaines is a good example. I didn't know that. Really? The DeSantis campaign is paying Riley Gaines. Wow. For, for consulting just two weeks before or two weeks after she endorsed him. So, you know, the timing was interesting, but. I find that practice So, wait, wait, gross. two weeks after she endorsed him, she gets paid by his campaign? $10,000. Interesting. So, I find that practice gross. You know, and, you know it's and funny. I, and I, like, I, that was something that I wanted, because I went and spent, I went and spent the day doing a documentary for our, te my tenant media show called In the Arena, where we go and we show this process. Shout out, tenant. And. I was accused of being disloyal because I was going out with Vivek, but I just want to tell an interesting story. And he's the only guy that had campaign uh, events today, right? And they were all over the state, and it was very interesting. How 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 else can we look? Bunch of Gen Z, bunch of Gen Z kids, by the way. That he's like, paying? Well, no, that were showing up to this hmm. and saying that they found him through TikTok. And Is I'm Anthes? not on. No, no Vivek. Vivek. Oh, Vivek. So oh, Vivek's sorry. events were stacked by and large with TikTok kids. He's clever. Which was very so, interesting. Uh, so some more results have just come in a little bit. Uh, Vivek's still in fourth, and uh, but he's within 15 votes of Nikki Haley. Ooh. I gotta be honest, I'd be really happy if Donald Trump wins resoundingly and Vivek's in second place. Trump's yeah. number so far, I just wanna say nice. <laughs> I just don't like the paid 69%. influencer model. Pay you for your well, endorsement yeah, model. Yeah, it is. Wait, 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 hold, hold, corruption. Hold on. That used to be called like plain and simple, like corrupt. Like you do that so, in politics, you pay someone for an endorsement. Who, you call that corruption. Do you know any other people that he's, he's paying that are prominent influencers, or do you not want to? Well, there are look, war? there are ways there there are ways that these campaigns are shielding the names. Okay, of some of this a, a winner is in with less than one percent of votes. The New York Times has called Donald Donald Trump the winner of the wait, Iowa I was, caucus. I was told. <laughs> I was told by Team DeSantis. <laughs> DeSantis that DeSantis was gonna win. That didn't happen. Wow. Wow. Less than one percent wow. of votes in. No way. Are there other seven thirty-two? I don't understand. It's still, it's still very that logic. Early. What? Is my mic even on? Yeah, I think you're a little quiet, and so is yeah. Seamus. Yeah. Can well, that, that's good for both of them, actually. <laughs> Perfect. Maybe during that <laughs> screaming match. Oh, my oh Ryan yeah. Binkley's got two Ryan's votes. Catching up, Binkley. Binkley. Please, well, I they... just want Vivek to beat Nikki. How Haley. can they call him? He's, with 1%. he's within twelve votes of beating Nikki Haley. That's incredible. That's a good sign. Come on, Vivek. Well, you got this. I got to be honest. I, I just hope the race Nikki, has Haley, been called, Nikki okay, Haley fails. The race has been called yeah. by the Associated Press. The race was called before most of the votes were reported, which often means the call was based on polls and other data. Oh. Okay, so. So we can go home now? It's done? I got, no, I think it's. I, I, I think we're all happy to hear that uh, uh, Donald Trump won. Of course, he was going to win. He's at 70%. His number is only increasing. <laughs> but the, the race that matters is the cultural race. And that is. I would like to see Vivek crush DeSantis and Nikki Haley. Wait, it's CBS, really CBS News now calling New York. It's CBS News, CNN. Trump campaign officially shares the AP message that he won. 
I, I personally find Vivek to be the superior candidate, but I know that politics is a popularity contest. I can accept that. And Donald Trump is massively popular. What do you think, Alex, particularly you and anybody that wants to talk about it, as a Vivek Donald Trump ticket, regardless of who's, I mean, I think Donald Trump is the, the well, lead. I think Vivek has certainly positioned himself for an incredible future. Is it in 2024 on the ticket? I don't know. Um, but I think we have a lot of great options. I'm a big fan of Dr. Ben Carson. I think he's been a, a, a tremendous uh, asset to to our movement. Uh, he's a really great man. Um, I think Vivek certainly is should be considered, um, but I do believe that President Trump uh, has made up his mind and will probably uh, find who, out. Who is it? We'll probably find out that uh, sooner than later. And, I, and this primary should wrap up sooner than later because you know, Joe Biden just posted his financials that he raised this last quarter, $117 million. He gets to save all of his money and prepare for the general election. This primary so far, $250 million has been spent. And look at that margin right now. And so we are just blowing money that we need in November. And so we need some of these jokers to drop out. And so we can take the fight to Joe Biden. Man, you're, you're so right. This was a spectacular waste of money. I mean, if it's like, going to be this, if it's they're going to call it in like 29 seconds. And how much money was 300 spent here? votes coming in? Well, how much money was spent here? Chris, Chris Christie yeah. was talking about it on the um, leaked audio, right? Like yeah. when he was, he didn't know he's live. Well, he was, he was tallying 200 million dollars. Ron DeSantis has spent 99 million dollars in the state of Iowa. Oh, 99 million. Wow. And uh, he's got TV. 75 he got, he votes got 75 so far. Votes, yeah. Do you work for he Trump's campaign? Votes. I do not work for Trump's campaign, but I. I uh, am close with most of the folks over there. Uh, I've been blessed to become uh, friends with the president. I'm excited to see him in, in a few minutes here. Uh, he's going to be in great spirits and a great mood. One, uh, one, one, I, I, I do want Brian Binkley just, has two votes now. I uh, yes, want to mention. But I do want to. So I, I do need to point out the uh, uh, while you may be upset that Ron spent all of that money, uh, when Bloomberg was running and everyone in the country was laughing and he spent half a billion dollars doing it, just understand. He spent a lot of that money on YouTube channels that hated him. Mm -hmm. And so congratulations funding the people who spread the message that you suck. Yeah. So understand when these people are spending money, it's great for the, for the uh, cultural ecosystem. What they're trying to do is that campaigns like DeSantis, I don't know if he's buying ads in social media the way Bloomberg was doing, but they're trying to counter the message of people who are saying Bloomberg sucks. It doesn't work. So all he ends up doing is giving money to people who hate him to make more shows about why he's bad. So it doesn't really work the way they want. Congratulations on, on wasting that money. Is it is the DeSantis? What's he spending the ninety nine million on? Is it TV commercials? I bet it's a lot of TV. So he had he for months he was saying we're gonna win. You know, please find this clip. You got to show your audience this clip. They say, Ron, how do you pronounce your last name? Is it DeSantis or DeSantis? And he goes, it's pronounced winner. You got to find this clip. <laughs> you got to find this clip. <laughs> got him. Hey, can, can, can I ask? Something say, it's, it's pronounced winner. As, as someone who's been watching online and chuckling to myself, what was it that, do you live in Florida? I do. So what was it that like sent you over the edge with the Team DeSantis? I think how, because uh, nobody goes harder than you. Well, they certainly were a lot of fun to spar with early on just because, you know, I'm, as a professional Twitter troll, I try to get under people's skin. And the second you, sh like, once once somebody shows that the, their skin is like has been breached, you just keep pressing in and you press in, and so it just becomes a lot of fun. And so uh, they reacted to everything. We tried to bait them into fights that weren't important, and then they spend days and days on a news cycle that uh, was completely irrelevant to the campaign. And they couldn't help themselves. They engaged every single time. They fought on every single issue. You know, I think Tim pointed out a really important one. He said, you know, the AI fight. So they, oh, get, yeah. they get caught making a video with Dr. Fauci and Donald Trump hugging an AI and incredibly shady. And Tim Poole called him out. Senator J.D. Vance called him out. Josh Hawley called it out. They said and then their response is, well, Donald Trump shared this meme of Ron DeSantis riding a rhinoceros. It's basically the same thing. And like they would they die on their hills. They refuse to say I was wrong. And they they just push in and push in. And uh uh, Whoa. We got good news. Vivek, it, uh, Vivek is within that. nine votes of Nikki Haley. Come Whoa. on, Vivek. Yes. Get it. Get it. I hope Ryan Binkley beats Nikki Haley. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, in your experience trolling, have you gained troll resistance? Are you able to resist? Do you well, I grew up in video game culture. You know, so you log on, you play Call of Duty, you play, you know, whatever game you play. And you sit in your, with your buddies and you say the meanest things you can say to each other for, you know, all day, every day. And then you get off and you, you know, see each other at school the next day and you're best friends, right? Like, 
I don't, words don't hurt me. So like, I don't really care if somebody's like, uh, you know, they call me AB35K or they say I have no upper lip or whatever it may be. Like, like I appreciate the attacks and I find humor in the attacks. And so I like the game, but you get, these guys take it so personally and they're so offended by it and they react emotionally and psychologically and we just play I, with them. My conspiracy theory is that the people running DeSantis' campaign are Trump supporters and they got together and said, what can we do to sabotage Ron DeSantis? Because if you look at what they're doing, it literally makes no sense. No sense. I, I, I don't want to call out high-profile individuals who don't want to get involved in fights they don't need to be involved in. But we've had guests on this show who are prominent conservative personalities in a, in a different range of array of spaces. What I mean by that is like being as vague as possible is like an entertainer, perhaps. And they say things like when they show up to the studio, they'll be like, hey, I'm getting attacked by these DeSantis people. What's going on? Yeah. And I'm just like, what did you say? I don't know. And I'm just like, well, there you go. Welcome to Ron DeSantis' <laughs> campaign. Attack everybody and insult them and be condescending and mean. And apparently, that's what they think is going to get him the votes. It's not, oh, Vivek's, Vivek's with two, two votes yeah. from Nikki Haley. Oh, Vivek, you got to crush Nikki. Come on, come on. <laughs> oh. They did. Uh, it's Nimrata. That's right. <laughs> They're supposed to look, use our real names. That's right. Yeah. We, Nikki Haley says we must use our real names online. Oh, yeah. So this is online, and you must call her by her real right. name. Oh, no. Not naming Nikki Haley. No, Nikki Haley just jumped 17 no. and gained none. What Ryan percent, Binkley got six. What percent are we at now? Or is it give you a real time update? One Tim. percent of votes. Oh, it's still Tim. one. I just, one percent. I just DM'd you the video on Twitter. Oh, okay. You, I, you sent you, you I sent you the article about it too on Twitter. Nikki oh, Haley changed her husband's name. Articles, huh? Did you know this? Yes. No. She what? changed her husband's name to Michael. Can you back yeah. on this? Yes. What yes. was it? Nikki Haley. Uh, it was Bill or something. Yeah, it was like Bill. And she's like, I'm gonna call you Mike. She's now. like, I'm gonna call you what? Mike. Okay. Yeah. So she there, said, I'm gonna call you Big Mike. So there's been rumors for years. There's been rumors for years of alleged affairs. Nick, like, there's a staffer that came forward and said they had an affair with Nikki. And I don't think it was an affair. If, if this guy allowed his wife to change his name, I don't think it's an affair. I think he might be. Well, you whatever know, it is, look, I mean, like, there's Nikki levels Haley's of this. Ahead. There's, like, there's levels of being insulted. There's, like, first, like, your wife hyphenating instead of taking your name. And then there's, like, you taking her name. And then there's, like, her changing your first name. <laughs> and that's where Ooh, they are as a you're couple. Le, you're Guys, level, you're the, up here. It's like I dubbed like, the Michael. Uh, it is. It is getting brutal. Nikki Haley is now uh, well above Vivek. I, uh, so uh, early. Though. I suspect Nikki Haley pulls ahead of Ron. Really? Uh, and Ron finishes in third place with about 15. percent You think Vivek will be really? in fourth? Look, I think Vivek uh, is going to be very close to Ron. He campaigns so hard. But, but look at look. Money still matters, and you know Vivek. Uh, has probably been the most uh, frugal of the first of the top four candidates, yeah. and uh, he's putting up an interesting fight. But Ron wasted almost a hundred million dollars, and is probably going to be very close Whoa. to Vivek in the race. So I, I you want, should I play this? You clip? have to play this video. All right, here we go. I have to... You got a long last name, a European name, Steinhauser. There's been some confusion over your last name and the pronunciation, and I'm just wondering to correct the record. What is it? No, oh, that's ridiculous. These stupid things. Listen, the way to pronounce my last name, winner. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I don't I'm, know who's Hold on, I'm changing guy. my You're, you're vote. picking on a guy <laughs> that has <laughs> autism. <laughs> Stop it, please. Leave him that, alone. Betty, you're, you're a pro at this. Is that clip going viral tonight? <laughs> oh, yo, yo. Viral. Guys, guys, guys. Nikki Haley is within 16 votes of beating Ron DeSantis. Oh, oh man. Yeah. Wow. She, she's was... going to. Ron's going to finish in, in, in a third place. And he, Look, if he was a smart guy, he drops out tomorrow morning, endorses President Trump, tucks his tail between his legs, goes back to Tallahassee. But I don't I, think that's. Here's a question. I here's think a question. you're right, man. I mean, here's a question. So Ron's gone hard in the paint against Trump, right? Like I haven't missed this on the campaign trail. I can't pay attention to everything everyone says, but Ron's gone real hard. He's ran directly at Trump. Mm -hmm. How do you take that back, right? How do you then endorse the guy? Well, no. I think it's expected in politics. I mean, maybe not, maybe yeah. not, because trashing your opponent's different than explaining why you're the best. But also, we've seen people get trashed by Trump and then endorse him. It's not exactly yeah. the same. But people have very clearly humiliated them. I got I, 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 lying so. Ted Cruz. Yeah, uh, he he knocked Ted Cruz's wife too. Like he yeah, he went hard. Yes, but hold on, hold on, hold on. Ted guys, guys. I think he just he called Ted Cruz lying Ted, and then after the fight was over, it changed to lion. Like, mm -hmm. and, and then yeah. it was like well, it was on a to, to, to be clear, Ted Cruz did not endorse President Trump for this cycle, so Ted still has Nikki animosity. Haley is within two votes of beating Ron DeSantis. I think the best thing Ron can do is support the party. And not support necessarily. I mean, he could go support Trump, but I mean, you gotta, you gotta party unity at, at some point. And um, maybe they'll make amends. You know, I don't think they they dislike each other personally. Is it still one percent of the voted? 
one percent of votes are in. I mean, hey, it's early. It's I think we're gonna start getting big chunks, and it's gonna jump up faster and faster as the night is, we're getting closer to eight o'clock. Uh, I do think it's funny they already called it for Trump. Though. That's hilarious. Weird. Like but instantly, yeah. they called. Yeah, it for with Trump. less than one percent of the vote in, they're like, ah, he won. You know what's funny is because they're saying that they it's been called by the AP before most were in, which means it was based on polls. It's probably just some dude at the AP being like, guys, there's no way anyone else is winning. Just say Trump won. Yeah, Are they, exactly. they it's like, I want to go home. Can yeah, they, right? so these, Let's just get out of here. These caucus things, people just go and then they vote, but like anyone can go and vote. You have to be registered. <clears throat> so you can register. Are they paying people to go do it? Like is DeSantis 99 million partly like – we're going to make sure that you've got a car to the caucus, that you can get there early. Yeah. They imported the entire cabinet and government agency staffers of the state of Florida to go door to door in you know, for this frigid temperature uh, and beg people to go caucus for Ron. And, uh, you know, it obviously didn't work out too well for them. Uh, a lot of out-of-staters showing up at somebody's door in Iowa. Like the Iowans, you know, don't really appreciate that a whole lot. Um, but... I, this is, that was this the emergency I'm evacuation say, plan. I, I've spent them all up here. a lot of time with Vivek. I've talked to him many t multiple times, four or five times, and uh, I've been insulated in his campaign in the last week. I thought there was a shot that maybe he would come up on top. This, to me, is like I'm done with this Republican political debacle. Trump's got it. This is Trump's it. got it. Trump's the nominee. It, that 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 I look. Trump has gone from 70 at less than one percent with the race called for him. He's now at 57.7 percent. Even if Ron, Nikki, and Vivek's were all added up, they're still not beating Donald Trump. He's too famous. He's so famous. It's, what about, what it, about it, Ryan? Can we see what where Cruz is at? I'm actually curious. Has he gotten is? No, there's zero or Chris for other. Christie. Sorry, not Cruz. Hey, four. Chris Christie has four. Good what if like oh. Chris Christie flies up those four people and like has dinner with him? He's like, thank you so much for you know, thinking of me. <laughs> I mean, we a nice did thing the to do. right thing. We had a request in because we call him Crisp Crispy uh, <laughs> on my show, and we had a request in to go to a Krispy Kreme that's right down the uh, street from my studio, and to eat. Nikki oh, Haley's oh, beating Ron DeSantis. Ah. How sad. <laughs> Bird brain will be much Ooh. easier to destroy than Ron. By the way, we haven't even started on. Well, look, uh, Nikki. Democrats. The, the the rumor is, and I would warn everyone: don't fall for this trap should it be like rhino republicans or you know whatever establishment shills but the argument right now is that democrats are crossing party lines to vote for nikki if it goes to a general election they're not gonna vote for nikki no so she she, she might get higher percentages in the primary process she's not gonna get in the that general sounds like really really dirty yeah that you could you go in you you register as a republican you you caucus for the wrong person and then you can switch back to democrat afterwards yep. Come on, that's insane. Yeah. That's so stupid. That's like Cheney's political career. Right. That can't go, uh, be allowed going forward. I mean, you, what do you, what you register, you, you register. But like, what can you do about it? I don't know. A year, uh, so it's 2023. You're like, I don't want Trump to win. Register as a Republican. A year later, you go in caucus for someone else. And then you, in the general, can vote for whoever you want. Or you switch parties after the caucus is over. And that's because a Republican can vote for a Democrat in the No, general? because you can register for whatever party you want. You can change party affiliation. You're free to do so. It's free speech. Or it's free association or whatever. Uh -oh. Tim, do you think that all of the Twitter bots for Ron were able to vote in the Iowa caucus? <laughs> no. Yeah, I do think I, I think Ron DeSantis' <laughs> campaign. I, don't, I, I, don't, I will say this. I don't know for sure. I'm not accusing him of doing anything. But I will say it does, it does seem, most people would agree, that a lot of the – Pro DeSantis accounts online are bots. Yeah, I don't know if they're associated with the campaign or not, but you see they'll have some generic name with a gator in the name. They'll have some kind of cartoon character as the profile picture, and they all respond in the exact same ways. And I'm just like, it is not organic. At least the yeah. Trump people say weird things or insult you in different ways. Yeah. Like who? No, I'm just talking like <laughs> like you, Ma MAGA guy five one nine or whatever yeah. like will you. write. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. I, I guess I do that. I... Ron, the DeSantis campaign walked right into so much of this. I mean, that's wild. It was it was just like, I I I'm you know maybe it's a little crass or whatever, but that photo was posted of DeSantis's people and Christina Peshaw had her knees made red in you know Photoshop or whatever. I, I didn't get that. What did that mean? After that, it was like that was the moment where I noticed she went from DMing with people I knew. We were talking with her about having her or DeSantis come on the show. After that photo came out, it was like just the gates of hell had been unleashed, and I think that broke her. Yeah. I'm not, she I'm was not kind of I'm using, I think it broke her. It appeared to me that she was using campaign resources to settle personal scores, and yeah. she had a lot of the campaign assets and, and folks just went to battle for her instead of actually doing something that was helpful to the candidate. Yo, this is crazy. That is Ron Nikki is losing. pulling ahead? 
Yeah. Uh, that's what it looks like, unfortunately. Wow. She's she's up 23 point, uh, votes so far on, on DeSantis. So if Ron drops a 10%, that would be uh, $10 million per percentage point. That's not good. Wow. Wow. That's so much money. Uh, who spent more, Nikki or Ron, Ron. in Iowa? Ron. Ron put his, all of the eggs in, in Iowa. He had his entire ground game here. He bragged about how great their operation was here. Um, never backed down. His super PAC had their bus here basically the entire campaign. They pulled out of New Hampshire uh, many months ago, and his whole campaign was reliant on Iowa, and that's why he sought the endorsements of Steve Deese and Bob Vanderplatz and these people who were once considered Iowan kingmaker kingmakers, and I don't think any campaign is going to be seeking their endorsements uh, next go around. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of wild to have been someone. Look, year and almost two years ago, I'm hanging out with the Daily Wire crew, a story I've told a million times, and we're talking about why we think Ron DeSantis is the guy. It's well before Trump was back in the race. A lot of things changed since then. And we're like, Ron's young, he's got energy, he's got great policy, he's really working for Florida, everyone's really excited by him. And then as time went on, we got a little more disenfranchised. It got to the point where I was like, yeah, I'm kind of 50-50, I think Trump's back, his speech was pretty good. I like Ron DeSantis, we'll see what wow. happens. I just got a text from Wesley Hunt's uh, chief of staff. A Ron DeSantis supporter just charged Wesley while he was a Trump surrogate at caucus location. Video coming soon. Whoa. So. Oof. These folks aren't handling the loss well. Well, this is what I, I want. hope this Wesley's is what, this is, okay. They'll, but, but this, they'll this never the, back down. <laughs> yes, right. Oh, my God. Here's what I want to say about, like, there, there was a period where Ron DeSantis. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I'm a father of three. Shout out my to dad the, jokes. The I really audience, appreciate Any fathers in the audience, I really appreciate <laughs> the appreciation of the dad joke. Thank you. Ron was winning in the prediction markets handily, like two to one against Trump. Over time, Ron started That's doing. That's true. Yeah. He started, yeah, he, started wow. doing, he started doing worse and worse. So someone like me, I start making apt points about how his campaign is being run. His launch was bad. He lacked charisma. So and bad. even after all that, I said, I like the guy's got good policy. He's got to turn this around. And what did they respond with? Attacking anyone who would dare criticize his failing campaign. Now we're at the point where we're like, this guy has totally failed. But there are a lot of personalities who attached them, you know, tied their, their hitch to the, the, the DeSantis wagon. And no matter how bad things got, they kept saying, no, he's the best. No, I refuse to back down. A very bad day, Bob. Back what, are, what, what are they going to do? Well, are they going to try and come back and be like, MAGA, please take me back into your warm bosom. I'm sorry I supported this guy who, whose campaign was miserable. Yeah. No, or, or they do a Lincoln Project type group. And, uh, you know, I don't really want some of those folks on our side. We've, they've actually become a detriment of Ron. I don't want, I mean, I don't really want a lot of his people being advocates for us out there. Like normal, normal people look at some of these people and like they think they're weird. So, uh, I hope they stay far away from Trump world uh, moving forward. I would love to make it less about who and more about what we do moving forward as a union. Like this, making the America great again. Like we do it constantly. We've made this country great. Uh, let's do it again. Let's 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 reinvigorate the country with new technology and give the 21st century a run for its money. I don't, uh, to be yeah. honest, I don't even care who the president is if they're willing to do that. Well, I Perhaps. think I think this is a, a great message, and I think some of these numbers are going to hold pretty pretty closely here. And President Trump, I believe, will get over fifty percent, and that is a mandate. The voters want President Trump. He's going to go on to win New Hampshire, go on to win South Carolina. This primary should end. We should we should come together uh, and and focus our fight on Joe Biden. This is this if is I, interesting. Uh, Johnson County, Nikki Haley has the lead. If I may, I'm from Johnson County. This, this is where the University of Iowa is. This is the lar one of the, the largest centralized liberal populations in Iowa. Hmm. And this is what the polling showed, that Joe Biden voters support Nikki Haley. And these are Democrats voting in the Republican. This is Republican. liberal land, right? There. This is the college town, like communist Marxist professors. Take a look Johnson at County. That's Story that, County. That is. Nikki Haley is winning in Story County. Also a college county. That's and Vivek Ames. is in second. That's Ames. That's the University of uh, this Iowa State. Why do you wow. think it is that the Democrats uh, generally are supporting Nikki Haley? Same policies as Joe Biden? Yeah. It's Hillary Clinton. Yeah, yeah. right. She's a war hawk. 2.0. Uh, uh, but she's not even like— Joe Biden with a wig on? But it's, yeah. it's not even a joke to be like, ha-ha, she's like Hillary. It's like, no, she's literally got yeah. the same policies. It's crazy. Joe yeah. Biden wears Very a wig. Similar. You know, Nikki Haley gets Already. offended if you call illegal aliens criminals. Yeah. You know, she says yeah. climate change is a national security threat. Nikki Haley is straight up on video multiple times saying that Hillary Clinton's her hero. Right. And she worked with Trump. She was his ambassador to the U.N. That's yeah. what it was. Yeah. What She was, was appointed she... by Trump, yeah. And then he raised her hand one time. <laughs> and then was she OK? Was she cool then? Was she the same? Look, she, it's she kind work... of a bullshit role. I think we should 
defund the UN. I think we should be out of the UN. So you just put somebody there that wants the title, but they don't really do a whole lot. It's part of that liberal economic order, world police yeah. thing. I think, look, I think President Trump has been pretty uh, open to the idea of getting out of the UN uh, and, and pulling out a name. Like, it's, it benefits us not, it's zero. So, you know. I want to I jump to a story. We'll keep the, the, the results tracking, but this is big news. And as we're talking about Nikki Haley, I think it's important to bring up this video. Now, I'm not 100% sure this is the correct video. Not an accurate video. That's from 2021. <clears throat> That's not an accurate video. Okay, yep. good. Thank not you for accurate. pointing that out. Yep. We have this report from ABC News. Houthi fired missile strikes, a, uh, a, a missile strikes a U.S.-owned vessel off Yemen in the Gulf of Aden, raising tensions. So we're now hearing not only is the U.S. and the U.K. bombing this, uh, the, the Houthi rebels, they're firing on U.S.-owned ships. They fired on U.S. warships. War is escalating in a very, very dangerous fashion. Even if it doesn't get crazier from this point, and this is the level it's at, trade is going to be heavily affected. Your, the cost of your goods is going to go up. Nikki Haley is the candidate of more war, foreign intervention, and lying about it the whole way through. Yep. This is why, as I know we're supposed to be this honorable news program, program tracking the results. No, Nikki Haley is awful. Don't vote for her. I hope she loses. Otherwise, World War III. So uh, uh, Jason Miller, the Trump campaign, ruled out today uh, Vivek as VP. But did not rule out Nikki when asked. Well, well hold, but, but, but break this down for me. What do you mean? He, I saw the clip. He was asked, "Could Nikki Haley presumably be the VP?" And he's like, "That, that's in the cards," or something to that effect. He didn't rule it out. Well, Why? Ultimately, ultimately, well, there could be two, two with, things um, here. Oh uh, gosh, Laura Trump or Kimberly Guilfoyle, they also didn't if, rule if, out if you look, if you look at the well, political, if you look at all the establishment political analysts, they're going to Trump and they're telling him it makes sense for Trump not to say yes or no. Also, makes sense for him because he could uh, essentially stop Nikki from attacking him during this election cycle by mm. possibly maybe giving her a possibility, and therefore she's she's going to have to be careful with the criticism that she launches against him. So yeah. strategically, when you look at the situation, anything and everything is plausible here, but I think as independent media, we need to send out the message that Nikki Haley is horrible. Come she is awful. We talked to, to Tucker Carlson specifically about this, and I asked him, would you support a Trump-Nikki ticket and Tucker Carlson said, absolutely not. Well, so no, we need, I think, I think, well, I think we need that message out there I'd, more than ever. He said more than that. He said I'd lead yeah. the protest well, yeah. against that. Well, exactly. I, yeah. can, I can say this. Trump has always promised that he will fight who's ever in second place. And for the longest time, Ron DeSantis was in second place. Mm. And so Nikki Haley didn't face the ire. But if you're starting to pay attention now, Trump's up. You know, his super PAC's done a couple million dollars in attack ads against Nikki Haley in New Hampshire. Uh, and there's a ton of material. Nikki Haley's been public office for over 20 years. She's 20 years of baggage you're going to go through, 20 years of stupid statements and, and terrible policies that she supported. And uh, she's about to feel the heat because she's in second now. And uh, she's not going to enjoy being in second. She, who knows if she's there for long? Uh, maybe Vivek is the, the the last man standing ultimately after you know besides Trump. Has Trump attacked Nikki? Oh yeah, he calls her bird brain. Uh, he thinks that she's a stupid person, so he calls her bird brain. He's not wrong. Uh, you know, uh, there there's great ads up right now showcasing Nikki. You know, being uh, being more concerned about protecting the feelings of illegal aliens than protecting our borders. Uh, she she really doesn't want you to call illegal aliens criminals, and so she's incredibly weak. And you're going to see a lot more of that, I'd assume, now that she's firmly in second place. I think Trump is the incumbent. It's like a second term president. So, yeah. like at this point, I hope that he focuses on what and uh, telling us what he wants to do next. Like it is very important. Well, to you rally can go to, go to Agenda Forty Seven. Go to Trump, DonaldJTrump.com and go to Agenda 47. Every policy position for his next term, for next administration. Uh, and I can promise you that he's already been doing a, a great job of, of looking at staffing for the next administration because that was something that, uh, you know, it could have been a little bit better in his first term, obviously. Uh, and he's taken it very seriously for this next term. It could have been way better the first time. But I get it. They were like, I think Don Jr. was on the show yeah. being like, you know, you get in there the first time, you're like, whoa, we won. Yeah. We've got three weeks to staff this. People are telling you, pick this guy, pick this guy, pick this guy. And you're like, I, I guess I'll yeah. go with. So I, I think you know, we assume that you have an R in front of your name. You're on our team. That's yep. what we thought. And, you know, he got in there. And then he, early on, you learn that not, that's not the case. And so um, he, he found out who his friends were. He found out who he can trust, who he can put in these positions. And uh, he's had four years to think about it. He calls this period that we're in right now a pause period. And, uh, you know, 
he, he's very excited to get back in there. Yeah, his VP pick is going to be crucial. It's going yeah. to be absolutely critically important to see his trajectory. And for, for my vantage point, an anti-establishment figure makes more sense than an establishment figure. Because if Agreed. it's someone in the establishment, they're just going to take him out. It's it's quick. It's yeah. easy. The CIA has heart attack guns decades and decades ago. So it, it's, it's guaranteed. So but if we it's like, an anti- talk a lot it, about yeah. this. If, it, if it's a very strong anti-establishment person, they're going to have to think twice. It has to be someone more radical than him. It has to be someone who's yeah. willing to speak on the issues a lot more aggressively than he is and also kind of be different than him when it comes to some of the things that also divide his base. You mean Tucker Carlson? Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. But let's, let's, let's talk about where we go right now. All right. If Ron DeSantis, uh, Michael Malice tweeted, shout out to Michael Malice. He says he doesn't see how Ron DeSantis can continue if he comes in third behind Nikki Haley. Yeah. There's a little bit more context there. But it's, it's an interesting question about what happens now in New Hampshire where supposedly... She's polling at 30%. I In a CNN poll? Yeah, I don't know if I believe Saint, that. St. Anselm has her at 22 and Trump 22. up 26. So, um, and, and, and in the CNN well, the, poll. The 530 the, aggregate yeah. is 30.3% to Trump's 43.4. That's shocking. Hard are, to de- are Democrats That's allowed really to vote shocking. in New Hampshire? I don't know. Yeah, the they are. And that they may are. be. And a- independents. Uh, but they, uh, but they're expecting. I mean, they're factoring an incredibly high turnout. I think the record turnout for Democrats in a Republican primary is like thirty-five percent with I, Democrats I, and Independents. I do want to just point out, um, man, Free State Project guys, what are you doing? What's going on in New Hampshire? Voting for Nikki Haley? Yikes! It's a weird state. Mm-hmm. It's a great yeah. state, but the way they, I mean, they have Governor Sununu currently as governor, and he right. is a rhino's rhino. And so, yeah. so do you? He do endorsed you, Nikki you Haley think, too. So with that polling. I don't see Nikki Haley dropping out. I don't see – Ron DeSantis is polling in it. And Nikki's in, got order. money coming in. Ron's got money running away from him. What person would be dumb enough to invest in Ron DeSantis after this performance? I, I, I'm just – man, Ron DeSantis really just set himself ablaze and ended his career. I just look forward to reading all the obituaries written about his campaign tomorrow. They're going to – they're going to – He's done. Yeah. Now, look, he's still within, like, what, 17 votes of Nikki Haley. Yeah. If he finishes in second, he might be able to limp on. But, but he's he, going in the wrong direction. Well, no, I mean, it was actually a little bit worse a moment ago. Okay. So we'll, we'll see, but he's down, he's down, he's down. We will see. Trump's already got 12 delegates, they're saying. So we'll see, man. Still 2%. But it's, it's kind of sad, isn't it? Yeah. The promise of Ron DeSantis and his governorship. But I, I do think it's fair to point out two things. The reason why Florida's doing so well, everyone likes to attribute everything to the executive. It's the legislature. Florida's got great representatives and state senators. It's a ruby red state. And that, right, when these people pass bills, Ron DeSantis gets to sign them. I think so here's, the here's one to watch, the governor's race, the gubernatorial oh, race. Oh, Ron DeSantis has taken oh. second place. Okay, well, yeah. <laughs> there we go. Look at that. Now, he, now he's actually up by, what, 17? Hey, it could, it could turn around for him. Maybe he'll build a limit. But anyway, continue. Sorry, Benny. No, it's just, it. so now that Florida is a ruby red state with a ton of power and then projected power, right? So... When the census comes, the, the state will get four new congressional seats and so forth, and the governor will be insanely powerful. Ron cannot run constitutionally, and that race is already heating up in the state of Florida as a Florida resident for who's going to take that role. You're going to see some big names throw their hats in. What, is, what does Ron do after this? I have no idea. I mean, everyone he, thought— Well, he, he started this new college in Florida called New College of Florida— and hmm. he'll, it's like uh, the new Hillsdale College. And is, that, is that for real? He will likely appoint himself to the president of that role. Can you explain to me where Rob came from, calling him Rob? Just to mess with him. Okay. <laughs> yeah, like, and, and again, no. that's, like, that's something that's so stupid, but they got so upset about it. Yeah, the, and, the, the trolling from you guys was making them insane. You got to know the Chinese it's are not, very not good at trolling. It's not just the trolling. Well, that's the thing. It's not just the trolling. Literally any even slight constructive criticism yeah. of Ron was met with his yeah. campaign people online diving all over you. So this is what's fascinating. And you can, I know ALX, my executive producer, comes on the show with regularity. Um, Great this is something that we would. This is something that we would track all the time, obviously. Mm-hmm. Is when we did it, it's so not just trolling. You said slight yeah, trolling. Just a, not even slight trolling, like even just constructive when, feedback. So when something, when we didn't say something mm-hmm. about like a big news story mm-hmm. about Ron DeSantis, we'd get trolled. Hmm. So when Kim Reynolds endorsed Ron DeSantis, there was a bunch of stuff going on. We didn't mention it in yeah. our feed. And the entire uh, DeSantis team came scorched earth oh for us, gosh. like tagging us, naming us, and, uh, uh, because we didn't talk about Ron You didn't DeSantis. like my post. Right, it's like crazy. It's crazy, man. Wow. Like... 
That's insane. Yeah, so so it's not just trolling him, not even if you just, just didn't like not talk about him. acknowledging yeah. him. That's right. Wow. It's very mean girls energy. It was very like um a prepubescent like uh high school uh acne energy. I've never seen a campaign like it in my life. I've never seen anything like it. Yeah, so that's my question I guess for the table is is have we seen have we seen anything this bad? Before, have we ever seen a candidate with such high hopes mm -hmm. fall so spectacularly? Jeb, Jeb Bush. Well, Jeb. Well, <laughs> it, it, to <laughs> oh, make to on. make matters worse, Jeb Bush's senior advisors were trolling Ron DeSantis two days ago. Wow. Wow. Well, look, look. Ron is now up by no. This is know, more 60, spectacular. Was sixty five? This is more spectacular than the Jeb Bush thing. Jeb actually at least was running against the first time. Like the, they're running against an incumbent, so it's kind of like, what's the point? This guy has got it in the bag. But. He, the it's a second term. You I, know? But I, I think the thing with Jeb's campaign is, you know, the big problem is it was Jeb and his campaign. Like, who's going to, you know, it's Jeb Bush. I love that. There's so many point. issues with him. But when yeah. when Ron DeSantis, and particularly when he was first running, uh, before everyone had this uh, bad uh, taste in their mouth left by his, his campaign, um, it was like his to lose in a sense. Yeah, he was a superhero. And, and it was his campaign came, and his people just totally destroyed any momentum. You know, got. look, look. For the longest time, I've, I've uh, not just I, but many have been talk talking about where are the young, where where are the millennials to step up and enter politics, uh, or even Gen Xers, because for the longest time we have like what do we have like accepted and octogenarians all throughout Congress and yeah. yeah. And the issue is, I, I've been saying that it, it seems like for whatever reason the millennial generation doesn't take their role seriously. Doesn't they don't view themselves as leaders as people should be in charge, and when you look at the Ron DeSantis campaign, it is the made-for-home movie version of say Home Alone, like Home Alone one and two classics. Ron DeSantis campaign Home Alone three. Have you guys seen Home Alone three? No. What is it? Garbage. Terrible. It, it, it's Horrible. kind of a joke, but I, <laughs> horrible. It's, no, hold on. It's, it's kind of a joke, but I mean it as an actual analogy. In the first movie, and you have Donald Trump in the second movie. One reason I bring him up as, as examples. It is a high-quality production with music, acting. It's memorable. It's an Amer it's, it's a classic film. Catherine O'Hara. Uh, right. Mm -hmm. uh, John Candy, I believe, right? I don't and, know. And then, that was num number one. That was number one, right. Yeah. yeah. And then in Home Alone 3, it's some B-list actors. Uh, Scarlett Johansson's actually in it in like a very small role, so hey, shout out to her. Oh, no way. But um, it's, okay, the first one is a kid gets left home, shenanigans ensues. That's about it. Burglars try to come in. He's trying to fight them off. Home Alone 3 is an international band of terrorists are stealing nuclear missile codes from, from some device of some sort, and he has to stop them, but his mom is home. And it's just, it's low quality, it's garbage. But when, when uh, so out, now that I've made the silly joke, I've mentioned this. When, when Barack Obama, watch his announcement speech, when he's announcing that he's running for president back in, what was it, like end of 07 or, or 08 or whatever, I don't even remember. He's standing in front of a crowd of 10, 20,000 people, and he does this very charismatic thing where he goes, and that is why. I, Barack Obama, am running for the United States. And, he, and then the crowd just goes, Wah! and they're screaming. It's this historic moment. Ron DeSantis announces his candidacy on a crashing Twitter space going, well, I'm here to lead the great American comeback. And that was it. And it cut out. We couldn't, get, we couldn't hear it. There's no video. There's no crowd. There's no rally. There is no historical moment other than the failure of it. It's so poorly done. Yeah. Also, Luke, uh, like... I need that. I need that notepad for to 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 play out exactly what Ron DeSantis did because I was listening to it. The first one crashed. Then they restarted the space. Did you join the second space? Did anybody hear yeah. listen to the yeah. second space? So the no. second space, what you hear is the actual that space didn't crash, and you hear Ron DeSantis reading from a notepad. Oh yeah, uh, his speech, which fine, read a speech. Most politicians do read speeches, but you don't do that on a Twitter space. Yeah, you're stupid. <laughs> why would you do that on a Twitter? Like, why don't you even understand the medium you're talking on? So I'm going on Tim Pool IRL. That's the show I'm on right Tim now. Tim Cast IRL. Tim Cast IRL. And why would I like what what you don't do on this show is play a xylophone, right? And that's not. I mean, not that's like some late night, night on Friday. Ian might actually on Friday. Do that, I don't know. Yeah, or <laughs> if like you got one. I'm you don't. 100%. Why don't you study the medium? That you're on, but he right. just started into a scripted speech. It made no sense. I was like, "He's do he's done. He's doomed." Yeah. I was listening to it mm -hmm. in our kitchen with my wife, and I was like, "He's doomed. It's yeah. over." Like we well, played well, it on air. Team DeSantis I is claiming the election is rigged. Who? Uh, wait, what? DeSantis. Oh, no. the, Jeremy Redfern. I'm at a precinct that hasn't even voted yet, and the media is trying to call the race for Trump. So they're well, they're like only three percent of votes are in. Steal. So. 
And it was weird to see Trump at 1%. This is his official press secretary from his official office. And, you know, there's ethics issues, but we're not going to bring that tweet. up. Here's the tweet. I'm at a precinct that hasn't even voted yet. And the media are trying to call the race for Trump. It happens all okay. the time. Yeah. That, that happens all the time. Right. Yeah, it's only 3% reporting. Actually, like, especially in states with different time zones. So, like, the, the other half of the state, if a time zone splits in a state, like, you, yeah. you'll, you'll call the state, and uh, half the state hasn't even voted yet. That happens. Uh, oh, this is this a tweet from Wesley Hunt getting attacked? Yeah. Oh, wow. Let me, uh, you, you tweet, or Wesley I, Hunt I, tweeted this. Yeah. Is, it, is it violent? Uh, I didn't watch it all the way through. Let's, uh, let's pull up this clip. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. This is a tweet from Wesley Hunt. Let me slow down here. Great dude, by the way. He says, tonight at the Timberline Caucus, as I spoke on behalf of President Trump, an enraged man attempted to stop my speech. He shouted Trump was racist. You know, the same tired Trump we've heard over and over. But on this day, of all days, Martin Luther King Day, the people of Iowa, just like President Trump, judge me not by the color of my skin, but by the content of my character. The anti-Trump movement is in full-blown meltdown. So let me, uh, let's uh, play this. Is the smartest, most genius well, member of the four, four minutes. Four do, minute clip. Do we know what? what yeah, what? Uh, about a minute and a half in. Minute and a half? And this is from someone on the DeSantis team? Trump. They say he was a DeSantis supporter. <laughs> now, I'm a military guy by trade. Come from a military family. My dad's a retired colonel. Maybe my go a little bit went more. To West Point first in my family. I went to West Point. Do you know where it's at? My brother went to West Point. There were 60 going. years of the families. He rushes the court. Today, 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 What? What's going on? Wow. What did he say? Good. So, so how do you know this guy is connected to DeSantis? I'll just say this was a text I got. He said a DeSantis supporter. He said, how could you do this on Martin Luther King Jr. Day or something like that? It's like, is, is, that, a, is that a white guy? Man. No, I, no, that's not. That's not. No, 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 no this no, guy right here. Okay. It's, it's. Sorry, that'd be funny. I, know, I'm sorry. I, mean, I mean, me and Seamus had more serious arguments it, than that. But I mean, I'm saying, yeah, they went at each other. I just, I don't see skin is, color. Is the guy, color. is the guy who's yelling at Wesley Hunt also a black man? Hmm. He appears to be. Right. I, I can't. You can't. It's hard. It's hard to tell. But is that his point that Wesley Hunt is betraying Martin Luther King or whatever or something like this? But how? Who knows? For supporting Trump. Trump. Who he okay. He said something that bothered the audience. But we missed it. It was a little bit before. Well, he said, how, how dare you? He's racist or something like that. Shout out to Martin Luther King. Let's uphold his Well, vision. I think he's getting a lot of flack right now. I think the important thing to recognize, too, is there's a lot of people in history. People need to know the, uh, the truth about. And, and if you don't really pay attention, uh, you might just believe the simple things of them. A good, a good obvious example is like Che Guevara. Like, that dude was, like, a really bad guy, but young people just wear his shirt all the time because they don't pay attention. That being said, Martin Luther King Jr. had, a, had some great points, but uh, I'm not going to sit here and try and adjudicate the whole debate that's been going on. But a big thing happening right now is criticism of MLK over a lot of the stuff that he was involved in. I don't know. I don't know oh, enough yeah. about it. I'm but sure. I'm, I know the, people the FBI, the, the FBI knows about it since they were Oof. spying on him and then uh, – recording his private conversations with his mistresses and then playing it to his wife when he was in jail, trying to, of course, get them divorced, as, of course, a court in, ta in Memphis actually found the U.S. government complicit in the assassination of MLK. Well, take a look at this. From, uh, uh, it's on Twitter, on X. The, mm -hmm. the FBI tweeted, This MLK Day, the FBI honors one of the most prominent leaders of the civil rights movement and reaffirms its commitment to Dr. King's legacy of <laughs> fairness and equal justice for all. There's a community note that reads, so The FBI engaged in surveillance of King, attempted to discredit him, and used manipulation tactics to influence him to stop organizing. King's family believed the FBI was responsible for his death. So shout out to it, Community it's not Notes they, on X. that they believe there was an actual court case in Memphis in 1999 that looked at all the evidence, and a jury found the U.S. government complicit in the assassination of MLK. They paid a civil... Fee. I think this, they won. They won a hundred dollars, but the one hundred dollars was just uh, for the court proceedings to kind of move forward. I got I got some so, bad news for you, Alex. Ron's actually pulled ahead uh, of Nikki 
by by a good amount. Mm. Well, we'll see what happens. Uh, as long as Nikki loses tonight, I'll be happy. Uh, otherwise, I, I kind of really don't care. It, 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 the idea of anyone fun. losing to Nikki Haley is just so depressing. Oh, poor Vivek. I, I, I honestly, it, it even makes me sad to see Chris Christie lose to Nikki. It's just like, <laughs> well, there's so only brutal. one. There's only one winner, Vote and that's Chris whoever Christie gets the please. most. So that's there's no everyone's a loser except for DJT at this rate. The the FBI Ain't first your last. Just don't want to let this slip. The FBI pre-wrote the suicide note for MLK. Is, yep. is that correct? Yep, yep. And they what? were Which encouraging is... him to take his own life wow. when he was going through a difficult time. Yep. They Which sent that... letters. They sent letters saying you, you got to off yourself. You got to kill yourself. You're a horrible person because of so and so. Signed yeah. FBI or what? Signed. Fake no, no. The FBI yeah. literally was running psyops uh, on MLK. Where do I know this? Yep. The FBI is on files. Yep. So the FBI has released these files, and they have like. They're available on the FBI website. You and like- and the agents who did this were never held accountable. So this was the beginning stages of the FBI under J. Edgar Hoover, who also uh, was a person who was probably being extorted as well for the dresses that he was wearing. Yeah. But, 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 but that's the start of the FBI. So what are they doing now? RFK Jr. was just asked about the, the wiretapping yep, that- recently, and he defended JFK. And our wiretapping. wiretapping of MLK. Yep. Wow. Uh, yep. And so, really? yeah, he's he's in a. He said he needed to do it. Yeah. Why? Which is crazy. He's he's in a tough spot. He's he's. But why did he think there's that something he needed strange to do happening well, to RFK father, Jr. Father was I don't know what's with, happening to RFK just, Jr. But there has been a huge turnaround in his in his in his kind of team was that is very kind of bewildering. Uh, he was on, uh, admittedly, um, and we found this out through the documents, but before the documents came out, he said he was on he flew the on Lolita plane. Express which, uh, with Jeffrey Epstein and his wife all the way back in the early 1990s. Um, uh, and that's what fa- he admitted to. His father was attorney general overseeing the FBI's operations, and so he's being asked to defend his late father, right, I suppose, would be the Bobby what's, what's actually going on, JFK Jr., uh, RFK Jr., is being asked to defend his father's actions, he must have signed off on this. You'd have to assume. I mean, I don't know. But you'd have to assume in some level his father knew about what they were doing to MLK. And so RFK Jr. in a tough spot. I mean, it's, it's, your, it's your dad who met his own untimely demise. I mean, obviously, you know, tragically and horrifically. So it's like... Probably at the hands of the intel agencies. Exactly. Yeah, they said yeah. it was well. Sirhan, yeah, right. Sirhan, some wild guy in a kitchen. But, fellas, I do have to bounce. Out All right, man. I'm to celebrate a victory. And uh, appreciate you hanging out. As you can see, it was very close. We we <laughs> we uh, we're our wait. We are waiting. Get Hopefully out of here. The fake can come by. Yeah, he's, she's going to be here in a few minutes, according to uh, text that I've been receiving. A few minutes. Well, I don't want. I don't want to give is. false hope. But eight. I think eight fifteen was the call time. But we'll see. We'll see. Eight fifteen was the call, call time. For, yeah. So one minute ago, he he's to the fake's credit. Between the three candidates that are behind Trump right now, he significantly spent less money. And is probably overperforming that his predictions were early in the cycle. And 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 also Nikki Haley's voters, a lot of them probably Democrats. Yeah. Yep. So you know, I don't even consider her votes to be actual. She's not convincing anybody but Democratic Party to vote for Hay- Nikki Hay- uh, Hillary. Yeah. Vivek also worked very hard um, hitting the ground game yeah. here, here more than I think anyone else. So. And it's crazy. You know, when Ron DeSantis does an event and he meets people, the people that he meets typically don't like him. Vivek kind of is charismatic and he has something called Yo, Riz. These video, <laughs> what's, what's this video where the guy, the guy in the wheelchair getting flooding? thrown out of the DeSantis event? Yeah. Yeah. What, what was that? Why? He, so this, there's, there's a, a meme team. It's called the Dilly Meme Team. And this guy in a wheelchair showed up at a DeSantis event wearing a Dilly Meme Team hat. And because he didn't like his hat, he got rolled out of the And then there's the, the other event. guy, Matt Kim. Is that his name? Yeah. He got kicked out he as got, well? Yeah, Matt Kim. Too. What's These guys story? didn't do anything? They just showed up, and obviously they're critical of DeSantis on the interweb. And, Man, uh, I kind of wish I went to it, oh, what, those yeah. events. I texted yeah. you two photos oh. from, a, from the caucus event of uh, Nikki Haley voters, and so you can give people a sort of a, a, an image of... I have. Do they have blue? We hair? have a production team here, and they're at. They're at. Do you want to? Do you want to? Can you tweet them? I can't pull them from my phone. Got on the screen. Yep. If you tweet them out yourself, I'll mm-hmm. pull up your Twitter. Okay. God bless you all. All right, man. Thanks for hanging thanks out. Thanks coming out. Well, I, I suppose if uh, whoever is waiting in the wings wants to jump on while we're waiting for Vivek, unless he's here, you guys want to rock paper scissors for it? Josie's Alex right here. Brucewitz, ladies and gentlemen. Josie, the redheaded libertarian, is jumping in. Josie, Josie. how's it going? I'm gonna pull up Benny Johnson's Twitter. I'm tweeting it right now. He's tweeting it right now. What's your analysis, uh, Josie, on everything? Yeah, you're sitting there watching. Grab that mic. Talk to us. I just want Nikki to lose tonight. Amen. Well, I think we're good. I think I think uh, if anything is worth celebrating, it's her defeat. And I and look, there is there is a funny thing about watching Ron DeSantis lose to Nikki Haley, but 
I really want Nikki Haley to come in fourth. I just yeah. want everyone to be I like, yeah, nobody wants her. Get out of here. Is this because people are genuinely concerned that Trump will be yeah, taken yeah, off the up. ballot somehow? Like, are people, do, is that actually, like, I mean, it's not a rhetorical question, but, like, is that... Well, is legitimate? what? What do you mean? The threat that Trump will either be removed legally... No, I know, but what do you think would... Ex like, what would that explain? Or then the next runner-up would be the, the, the number one candidate, the... Oh, like front runner for the Republican ticket. Cassandra Fairbanks had another tweet too. We have these images that we're showing of these Nikki uh, Haley voters, and it was a guy with a peace sign tattoo voting for Nikki Haley. And Cassandra uh, <laughs> McDonald, you know, she she works here. She's great. She was just like, "How are you so dumb? Like Nikki Haley is the warmonger candidate. Like, what it's do you probably think some old for? old boomer Democrat with a peace tattoo from their hippie days? Yeah, now they're in the uh, corporate chill days. I yeah. guess, unfortunately. Yeah, but look, you know, if, uh, if, if, if Nikki loses, which she's going to, she's, there's no way she's winning, then uh, we all have reason to celebrate, I guess, but it is what it is. Just say you're a misogynist, Tim. Goodness. That's right. Well, I suppose, hoping uh, Vivek pops in any moment, let's talk about this story here. We have this from Taylor Hansen, uh, Tenant Media shout out. He tweets, as I'm on my way home to Salt Lake City, Utah, I noticed six illegal immigrants are also boarding the same American Air flight. Looks like I've got some new neighbors. I want to pull up. Uh, I'll pull up the tweet. Maybe they've maybe they've pinned it. I don't know where. Uh, okay, tenants c covering all the caucus stuff. There's a video that. Oh, holy crap! Iran has allegedly launched an attack on a U.S. consulate in Iraq. Is it? Well, those those were the original reports, but the Iranians are now saying that they're attacking a rebel group that is against Iran inside of Iraq. So far, we have not gotten any confirmations that U.S. targets were. Uh, picked out here wow, wow great. oh and for, vivek was hitting another caucus site so he may be much later than well say la vie we have this story from tenant media this is crazy and we should definitely talk about this pertaining to the uh, u.s elections last night tenant reporter taylor usa confronted multiple satx police working a side gig where they're helping facilitate human smuggling at the migrant resource center in san antonio texas the officers are seen wearing their official sapd uniforms driving work vehicles and holstering their service weapons while accepting money from alleged cartel sponsored ngos to guard the facility and check illegal migrants wristbands upon, upon entry we tended to reach out to satx police for comment on the situation and received no response this story is massive it's got 2.3 million views just on a single tweet alone and this is what i was talking about the fear of what happens when law enforcement is, is, is committing crimes. What happens? These are, these are, what is it, San Antonio police? Using police and publicly funded vehicles, weapons, and, 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 and uh, equipment to help facilitate cartel, alleged cartel, human smuggling operations. We got that report just uh, last week. The DOJ is suing Texas because Texas deployed armed soldiers to block CBP access to the river. You now have a bubbling conflict between corrupt law enforcement facilitating human trafficking and smuggling and law enforcement at the state level trying to stop it. Where does that go? I, I, I defer to the states. The states have a duty to defend themselves. Right. But what do you think happens if the federal government doesn't back down? And what do you think happens if Nikki it's, Haley wins? It's an interesting conundrum for the federal government. Hopefully their, their, their goal is to support states' rights, mm -hmm. ideally, is, is cohesion, and you don't want to press the states away. And also they're dealing with geopolitical nightmare with this, like you're talking about the Houthis, what's going on in Ukraine and Israel, all these things. Hopefully the United States does not push the issue on this. I mean, Texas made very clear. Well, well, okay, what does that mean, the United States? They are actively facilitating human smuggling into this country and have been for several years. The charts show that it is, there's no way it's an accident. The rates are double, triple, or quadruple what they were under Trump and under Obama. So it's on purpose. Yep. And the only state doing anything somewhat is Texas, while the other states do nothing. Kind of made me think about the American Civil War. I was thinking about the Emancipation Proclamation and how Abraham Lincoln was like, hey, all you slaves in the South, you're free. And kind of like, and by the way, if you want to fight for the North, go for it. All these illegal immigrants, if the federal government were like, hey, all, the, all you illegal immigrants, you can have citizenship if you want to fight for the federal government, if you know what I mean, kind of thing. Like if there's a, just to like disincentivize people from trying to create some sort of civil war in the United States. We talk about this quite a bit on the show, but we have you here, Benny. I'm curious your thoughts on, the, on this border issue, right? You've got state level fighting with federal officers to the point where there are armed soldiers deployed against federal law enforcement. So... All of this goes back to the 1960s, Cloward and Piven, and the communists who sort of wrote the neo-Marxist vision for America and how to bring Marxism to America. And one of the number one things you needed to do was uh, balloon the welfare state large enough so that it actually 
collapses the federal dollar and the federal government's capacity. That's that's the number one way to create crisis. America would never be conquered. This was after World War II. So how do you actually bring down a behemoth like America? How do you bring down the you know the beast that is America? You have to destroy it from within. You have to give it a, a, a some type of uh, horrible malady and something that is so in, insufferable that it can't move forward. And so their idea was swell the welfare rolls, which you saw with the Great Society program, uh, swell the welfare rolls so big that the federal government can never afford it. And then that will create, of course, the millstones of high taxation and inflation that, that grind the middle class and you get no middle class. And th so this, the way that you swell the welfare rolls is to bring people here that, have, that don't speak the language, that have no skills, um, that can't get jobs or are having a tough time, you know, or, or, or can't work legally, uh, but are accessible, are able to get on welfare programs. And California is leading the way in this. And that's the way that you actually collapse the United States of America. I think that's the ultimate strategy here. A lot of people are like, well, they'll vote Democrat. I think, fine. yes, maybe, yes. But the real goal is the collapse of the country as we know it. And that was the, the vision set out by the theorists, the, com the Marxist theorists, neo-Marxist theorists, who uh, uh, Barack Obama are the acolyte, is the acolyte of. Do you think that they're making this decision to let these people in uh, on accident, that it's like toxically compassionate, or th are they actively trying to destroy the country? It's not compassionate, it's child smuggling. This is the most horrific thing that a, man, a human being can do to another human being. I mean, it's awful. What's I guess, happening. but once they hit the border, they're like, at this point, they're here. The idea that like, well, we can't turn them away. That that, that, kind of that, that is why what not. Creates like, it. why can't you turn them away? I mean, you yeah. can. But another they, country, every other country in the world turns away. I mean, go check out the, the border, with, the border with Egypt and Gaza. Yeah. But it, but it's but it's not just that, it, and that is true. The Egypt and Gaza is a great example. It's not just that. It's uh, uh, why the U.S. doesn't pay ransom to terrorists in the Middle East. It, it it is it is well known for the most part. I don't know. Biden may have changed some of this. That if you are traveling around, I don't know, Syria or something, and you get kidnapped, and you're an American citizen. The people who kidnapped you know the U.S. doesn't pay. They send a bunch of heavily armed dudes from a, from a Black Hawk in the middle of the night to kill you and anyone in the building with you. But European countries will pay the ransoms instantly. What happens? If you're Spanish or German, you're a huge target. You, If you're a journalist from Spain or Germany, a national, and you're traveling around the Middle East, they are looking at you. You you cost $4 million. They know that, that's the guy to get. Then there's an American next to him. They're going, nah, not that guy. You, you, they'll just kill you. If, if the U.S. is basically saying, borders open, if you're here, I guess you're here, what happens? Some dude in Honduras goes, well, if I go there, they'll let me in. Might as well go. If the, if the strategy was, we've blocked it off, turn around, good luck, you're on your own, not our problem. Guy in Honduras, I'm like, there's no point in traveling a thousand miles, they're going to turn me away. That's why I yeah. call it toxically yeah. compassionate. It's not real, it's like compassion to a fault. Like, we can let everyone in, it'll be okay. It's not compassion, it's the opposite of that. And and to Tim's point, uh, the CIA usually gives the money up front to the terrorists, um, and then that's usually how they get their cut. They don't rely on, uh, on, on, on uh, you know, killing people and, and, right. and kidnapping them. They just get the money up front. Uh, but 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 if you look at what, what's happening here, again, this is a deliberate plot here. This is a deliberate plan to not just create future Democratic voters, but there's a larger, bigger agenda here that has been weaponized against the American people that is causing division, that is causing strife. I think a lot of this is planned. I think they're trying to get as much of it done before this next election cycle because Clearly. they know this is going to be one of the key issues that they're going to be recalled for. And when they do, they want to make sure they have enough people here for whatever reason. Some people say we need military fighting age males to fight China or Russia. Some people are saying we might need these males to fight the other faction inside of the United States, maybe a part of take a drink civil war that could potentially happen as well. There's different what, theories what, what, out there, but the theories uh, are, are legitimate because it's not for the benefit of the American people in any way. You, you kind of look at it. Also, what, what, there's the possibility that the Biden administration invokes the Insurrection Act against Texas for blocking federal agents at the border. Uh, I would defer to the Constitution on this. So it's the federal government's job, Article 4, Section 4, uh, Article 1, Section 8 of the U.S. Constitution to protect the states from invasion. However, when you jump to the Tenth Amendment, the Tenth Amendment says that if the federal government is failing their own responsibility and the article doesn't say that the states cannot be can, cannot take up the responsibility then that responsibility can be taken up by the states or by the individuals and that's that's really key i think that we're going to start seeing some 
some well, really interesting. What if under that argument of section mm -hmm. uh, Article 4, Section 4, the Biden administration, administration says we are protecting the border by having our troops, our, our, our CBP and our, our law enforcement at the border, and Texas is blocking us from enforcing our constitutional duties, thus engaging in insurrection? Uh, Ken Paxton has an 80 percent win rate against the Biden administration, so he's pretty pretty probably one of the smartest people in the constitution that i've ever come across so yeah but uh, we're not talking about the like the legality of it norms are breaking down mm -hmm. the idea that the texas national guard was deployed armed to block access to federal law enforcement the concern there is at what point do both sides assert jurisdiction over the same area and when that happens who's going to try to arrest the other or, or does this really just come down to Biden administration just backs down instantly and says we don't want to fight we lose you win this is exactly what happened in fort sumner the kick off, kick off, kicked off the Civil War. And, like a, an well, argument over a military base where like a localized militia like started fighting well, the, the federal the, forces. The, the Union forces were occupying Fort Sumter. The, the, after the secession, South Carolina said, you are not welcome to be here, leave. The Union forces were like, it's our base we built and paid for. You can't secede, it's illegal, we're staying. And I think the only actual death in that conflict was an accidental death on the side of the Union. That could be wrong. Uh, his, his, I, I read a bunch of articles saying no one really knows who fired the first shot. But I'm simply saying territorial dispute well, I, over no, like federal jurisdiction is what kicked off the Civil War, and, and like what is seen as historically well, kicking off. And here's, but here's the, here's the best point. After that, we historically look back at that date and say that was the start of the Civil War. However, the actual first bloody battle was the first battle of Bull Run, which even after the battle at Fort Sumter, local residents in the area did not believe civil war could happen even though we believe it already started and were picnicking watching the first bloody battle which was chaos so we look at this border issue this jurisdiction issue and perhaps that's it perhaps all we get is a standoff which is happening now already with federal law enforcement texas national guard and we think nothing of it and even after some CBP guy shoves a National Guard guy, and then they try arresting someone, and we're like, wow, they're fighting. We still don't think we're in it. And then maybe after this, Texas deploys armed National Guard to the border to block a bunch of Biden vehicles that are trying to come in, mm -hmm. resulting in actual shootouts. Mm -hmm. And then we say 100 years from now, it started when the Texas National Guard deployed armed soldiers to block federal agents from facilitating human smuggling or well, whatever. So here's what I, I see. So in the Constitution, the federal government's jurisdiction over the border is literally just n the naturalization process. That's it. That's all that's written in there for them is the naturalization process. So it would say, you know, for that instance, that the states would be in charge of everything else, except for when there is an invasion. So I, I think what they could do is they would have to declare an invasion. The federal government would have to say, well, there's an invasion now. And then they'd, they'd go in there, they'd send their troops in and handle it by just continuing to do all the bullshit that they're doing. Yeah, the difference of the Civil War in the 1860s and now is internet video because we're not passively watching mm. stuff happen. We are crafting it as we go. Like, I don't know how many people are watching right now. 50,000 people. More than 80,000, 80, 80, yeah. Wow. <clears throat> like, the, the, the amount of consciousness that can be tweaked by our conversation literally is, is never in the human history has been. And maybe that's like part of this desperation of this time in human history is that we have this internet video for this purpose to repurpose, to create mass formation in like a, I, a good way. I, dis I disagree. Um, we may be reaching uh, our live concurrent audience between like 80 and 83,000 individuals, but shortly, you know, 20 years ago, it was millions for these very limited networks. And the only difference is the geography of the viewers. So if you go back to the 1860s, people would be saying the same thing. Wow, we can reach 100,000 people with the printing press instantly. Who would have ever thought we could influence so many people by printing papers rapidly on these machines and distributing? But the issue was ge geography. So the people in these areas, you could reach 100,000 by circulating papers. We're circulating this show to, you know, it'll probably end up being like a million people, but they're spread out. So the big difference is, whereas with the uh, Civil War in this country in the 1860s, it's geographic, it's north and south. So yes, ideas are being spread in those isolated areas. Now you're going to have pockets all over the country of different factions, and that's what we see in other countries and have seen in other civil wars. I think, though, if, you know, long distance is free now. You can make phone calls. You can do video chats with your friends and uh, out of state. The diaspora is is it's very clear. And and 20, 30 years ago, this show would have been shut down 15 minutes in because of what we were talking about. Like the ability to like if go we were, right at the situation and describe it to people is. They, 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 it was called golden handcuffs, and that's a common phrase. What would happen 20 years ago, if you were on like a cable network channel 
and you had a panel show where they expected you to say, you know, Nikki Haley's the best or something like that, and you went off the rails, they would let the show happen. And then later, they would tell you, hey, you know, we're, we're actually going to move your time slot, but we don't know exactly what we're going to do, so we'll let you know. You're under contract. You can't quit. They're paying you a lot of monies, a lot of money, but you can't produce any content. Golden handcuffs. They, they'll, they'll, they'll sign you for a few years. Then they'll tell you to wait. If you try and produce anything else, they'll sue you. They tried it with Tucker Carlson, hmm. taking a show off the air, but then saying you're under contract. You can't do any work. And he said, try me. Yeah. Back in the day, without Twitter, he'd be gone. And he right. couldn't. And here's the issue. Tucker gets the axe from Fox News. If this was 20 years ago, what's he going to do? He'd go to CBS. They'd say, we can't hire you. We'll get sued by Fox. He goes to MSM. We can't hire you. We'll get sued by Fox. Today, he goes, I'll make my own content on Twitter. And then Fox says, we'll sue you. And he goes, go for it. He would, the other networks would have basically just teamed up with Fox and locking him up and preventing his voice from being heard. So in, in that regard, I, will, I, I agree with you. This is something new and powerful that's breaking that dynamic. That being said, that, that control that they had back then, that was something to behold. They could snap their fingers and have 100 million people believe the most crazy nonsense instantly, and they've lost that power, or they're yeah. losing it. Yeah. It's really wild to look at the centralized control of the free networks that you would get. Even if you had a TV, you didn't have to pay for ABC, NBC, or CBS. It just comes standard with a TV in every American household. And PBS, I suppose you can include that. And how every single, every single night they were all on message. It was absolute government programming. Like my childhood, of course, it was in the 80s, and that was just pure government programming. All news. Yeah, this is something new. This ability for the human to tell you what I think, that, yeah. it's, it's not to be trifled with. It's, it's, we should respect it and use it to its ultimate. Luke, was that like the zenith of Operation Mockingbird, right? Would, like, would be like 1987, where every anchor was on message, where every outlet was free and broadcast directly into a million households. That was an Operation Mockingbird. There was other congressional hearings that uh, actually did find out that there was CIA agents at the top of almost every uh, major news outlet that were pretty much uh, calling the shots and directing uh, people to publish news that the CIA wanted them to publish. Now we're seeing a different kind of version of it with these same kind of intelligence agencies influencing social media and the algorithms and what people can and cannot say on those particular platforms. Platform. So they, they changed the way that they do things. Um, and instead of just going to these network heads, I think they're still at the network. I think they're just just expanding where the media and information is expanding. And what we're getting now, other than uh, in a limited way, kind of rumble and, and Twitter, is, is curated content that I think they centrally control in more ways than one, that we even don't understand as of yet just how sophisticated their manipulation of information is as now. So uh, to, to answer your question, they manipulated, the CIA manipulated what we saw before, and now they're doing it again, uh, with the exception of uh, uh, Twitter and Rumble, which are directly under attack by the establishment right now. So I, I think this is why um, there's such a fervent fight f to take those institutions down, because then when they're down, the establishment could pretty much do whatever they want to us. Um, but now that they're up, I think this is one of the th big things that is stopping a big kind of event, a big kind of October surprise. And a lot of the same old tactics were changed up. So when we have the next big thing to deal with, when we have the next big PSYOP, it's going to be far more complicated than what we're used to dealing with and have many layers to it where even our reaction, uh, being skeptical of it, could be playing along with the larger game against us as well. So I'm trying to think of this as, as how they're playing all this out. How could they get away with this? Because they are very maniacal. They do think many steps ahead of us, and they do try to control and limit what we can and cannot listen to. Let's, let's, well, uh, let me pull up this story. And speaking of what Luke is talking about, it's a tweet from NBC News. A network of public interest groups and lawmakers nervous about former President Trump's potential return to power is quietly devising plans to foil any effort on his part to pressure the U.S. military to carry out his political agenda. So quiet. Sounds like a conspiracy. News. <laughs> it's, it's, it, I mean, I guess the only reason we wouldn't call it a conspiracy is that they're publicly admitting they're doing it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'd said earlier that we've seen this one before. It was the Time Magazine mm -hmm. article after 2020, after that election. It was a very similar headline about how they save the election with a shadow government. 
the shadow yeah. campaign to it's save that, yep, the election. The if you click the on cabal the of elite. if you click on the article, you could see NBC News trying to justify this by uh, fearing that Trump is is a danger to democracy. So they're making the argument. Therefore, we have to take down <laughs> Trump uh, in order to save uh, our government, I which, think is, it's which in, is absolutely ridiculous. I think it's in the comments of the original tweet, but it's Amuse, which is at Amuse, and he says the person behind it is uh, Mary McCord. Yep, this one. He says, reminder, the woman behind the coup planning reported on NBC is Mary B. McCord, who served as the acting assistant AG for national security from October 2016 to 17. You may recall that she reviewed and approved FISA warrants to surveil Carter Page, a former Trump campaign aide. The FISA court, which approved these warrants in 16 and 17, later criticized government officials for providing false and misleading information about Page and the infamous Steele dossier. McCord is mentioned in the Justice Department Inspector General Report, which identified significant errors and omissions in the FBI's applications for warrants to surveil Page. McCord approved the fraudulent FISA applications against Page. Later, McCord was appointed to advise the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court as, as an amicus curiae, a curiae, as I pronounce it. Her role involves providing advice and expertise on matters related to foreign intelligence collection. Today, she is organizing the effort to strip Trump of his power as commander in chief. So, um... Is that a coup? Yeah, that's a coup. Uh, she sounds like, uh, I wouldn't call her the queen of the swamp, but maybe like a princess of the deep state, mm -hmm. uh, this this woman here. Uh, and, you know, that's what they have. They kind of dip into, they have their, their group of deep state, and then they just dip into them and put them in different positions all over the government. So she's she's one of them. So some somebody to watch for. Dictatorial ways. Trump will use his military if he returns to the White House. Their fear is, it's not the military. I mean, there's two things. I think their fear of his use of the military is going to be withdrawing forces and not engaging in this liberal economic order stuff. But then I think their big fear also is the criminal prosecution of them, their yep. corrupt actions they took in 2016. And uh, I got to say that may mean that Donald Trump has information that may lead to the arrest of Hillary Clinton. I don't know if any information will ever lead to the arrest of Hillary Clinton. <laughs> Yeah, I did like that he walked back the retribution uh, rhetoric a few days ago. I think it was two or three days ago. He mentioned that he wants to focus on building something great in the future and coming together. And, you know, maybe too little, too late. He's already been pretty plaintive that he wants to go. I don't know what he said exactly, but harass them. Get back. I don't know if he what he wants to do. I don't know what he wants the, to do. This story well, is a kind of huge, huge admission here because they're saying we're quietly working to subvert Donald Trump if he becomes the president of the United States. They're not being very quiet about it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they're, 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 they're kind of, uh, you know, telling... Publicly tell, declaring that they're doing it. They're arrogant a exactly. about it, yeah. yeah. So, so um, again, this also brings into question who's really in charge if you're the president of the United States. Is it the bureaucracy that's embedded within Washington, D.C.? Is it the deep state? As, of course, they're trying to solidify decisions before Trump is even in office, before he even makes them. And uh, to give Trump some uh, credit here, Yoel Harari, the, the second in command to pretty much Klaus Schwab, a, a head guy at the World Economic Forum. You've all. Uh, yeah. I'll call him whatever I want to call Yoel's him. He doesn't the guy deserve it. I'll call Yoel's him whatever I want to. <laughs> Russell Brand could, could kiss him all he wants. I'm not going to be, be kissing his butt here. Yoel Harari came out and said that if Trump is elected, that he will be dealing the death blow to the global order. Those are major statements made by Yoel. And Yuval. It's a statement, Yoel. It's Yuval. And Yoel. Oh. And they are very indicative to, to essentially a I lot of people. I actually think it's extremely people. important people know the guy's n real name is Yuval Harari. Oh, whatever. Yeah, Yuval so Noah Harari. The right. Time Magazine article actually goes on to list everybody involved because they were, you know, had to celebrate and congratulate each other. It says there was a conspiracy unfolding behind the scenes. Whoa, big batch of votes just jumped in right away. Does Chris wow. more than From 4% to 26% in the New York Times. Ron Sand is still in second place with 5,824. Nikki Haley with 5,450. Vivek Ramaswamy with 2,274. Percentages have all remained relatively stable. Yeah. Chris Christie has 13 now. Wow. He got 10. I don't know if he can afford to fly all those people out for dinner, but. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> He's got a lot of weeks. He'll or, just have dinner for 13 people. Well, Josie, I wanted to follow along with what you were saying. Yeah, there. yeah. <laughs> Any other Tuesday, you know? <laughs> 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 All right, let's do that again. All right, so there was a conspiracy <laughs> unfolding behind the scenes, one that both curtailed the protests and coordinated the resistance from CEOs. Both surprises were the result of an informal alliance between left-wing activists and business titans. The pact was formalized in a terse, little-noticed joint statement of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce and the AFL-CIO published on Election Day. 
both sides would come to see it as some sort of implicit bargain inspired by the summer's massive, sometimes destructive, racial justice protests in which the forces of labor came together with the forces of capital to keep the peace and oppose Trump's assault on democracy. Wow. Wow. Mm-hmm. I, wonder, I wonder if they called the race for Trump because all the reporters at the precincts just saw a bunch of people wearing Trump signs chanting Trump <laughs> over and over again. And they're like, ah, he won. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's it. It's his. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it was a handshake between business and labor is what they're saying. So that, that's, that's the deep state. When did that happen? Uh, that was 2020. It was right after the election. Time Magazine posted. They actually, you know, it says a pact, how I read it was a pact. It actually used to say cabal. Cabal. Cabal, and they went in and fixed Uh-oh. that. I think <laughs> they took it, that word out. The Yuval Noah Harari said that about Trump, that he's the biggest threat to the new order. Is that how he, how he worded it? The new. He will deal the death blow to the global order. This is that it. was Yuval. Though. Yeah, this is Yuval Noah Harari. The death blow to the, the world order. Order. So this, these World Economic Forum people are trying to build a new world order out of our liberal economic order. So, so this, Trump- is, this is what happens. Uh, they create the liberal economic order. It, you can read it on their own websites, on the CFR website. They talk about the creation of the liberal economic order. It's the financial systems that they have in place. It's SWIFT. It's IMF. It's the World Bank, et cetera. And then in, you, you end up with this viral video of George H.W. Bush saying, we can begin to see a new world order. New world order goes from being just a descriptive, like an adjective on world order, into a specific proper f- phrase, the new world order, which becomes a conspiracy theory. But what I think really happens is when people started correctly pointing out that these powerful individuals were trying to develop a new type of liberal economic order, what they did was they insert lies. This is one way to control when people are getting too close to the truth is you take control of the movement, of the, of the theories, of the anger, and steer them in the wrong direction. So then New World Order becomes some weird conspiracy theory. They start injecting fake ideas into it to distract everybody. And then New World Order turns into a conspiracy theory phrase that becomes rather mean- meaningless to the average person, and they dismiss it outright. Like globalist, that was another word. Globalist, the globalist. They, they said that was an anti-Semitic slur. And really what it is is, what it looks like is a bunch of pe- like international corporations and the people that run them and the international monetary system and banking system out of Switzerland. I don't know if it's only out of Switzerland, like Davos. They meet at Davos. It's a lot of these people you consider globalists because they don't adhere to any one country's laws. Um, it's it's definitely concerning. I think that Yuval is not wrong. Donald Trump, I don't know if it would be a death blow, but he would be a twist of fate and it would it would prevent a, a, create a new type of challenge to this uh, handing over of American wealth. This $35 trillion that we printed, the $1.6 they just authorized Congress to use next year, $1.6 trillion. That money, I mean, going to the Ukraine, a lot of it went to the Ukraine. Yep. It's, 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 it feels like it's being siphoned, that, that the United States is being siphoned out. They're done with this husk of a country to lead the world order. They want to do some new country or new, probably corporations run the new world order, I think is probably the the uh, recipe of the day. You guys ever see those fake viral videos that are super annoying where it's his family and they're walking on piles of $100 bills? There's like, there's a video of them and a big tractor trailer full of like just probably $50 million in $100 bills and it's pouring out and they're throwing it in the air. It's a really annoying thing that's on Instagram because people will watch it because they think it's real. It's fake. But someone took one of these videos and the Elon Musk parody account posted, you know, breaking secret uh, insider footage from Zelensky's home and they're walking through just piles and piles of hundred dollar <laughs> bills and money's just thrown all over the place. Because uh, I think that's how we actually view what's going on with Ukraine. Whether it's actually Zelensky or just a money vacuum to steal our cash to fund a waste of time. Like, I don't know if we can stop it, man. This is part of what concerns me. I, I'm not going to scream no. You know, there's better ways to twist and jujitsu the energy away from the creation of something you hate than to scream no. But like... What I mean, do you guys? I'd love to hear your well, thoughts. Well, uh, they did just say that Switzerland's going to broker, or they'd ask Switzerland and China, was it? Is that right? To broker a deal with Ukraine to broker peace? Well, the specific news article is Zelensky asking uh, Switzerland yeah. if they could hold peace talks and involve China in it. Yes. That's the specific news report. That All right. So that, that, that means hopefully, hopefully this is the end of the Ukraine war and sending them money. I mean, ideally, if I want to be an optimist. Maybe the end, but then what will happen is if BlackRock, if they use BlackRock to try and rebuild mm. the country, you might end up seeing American money go to, to the rebuilding of the Ukraine too. Oh, you will regardless. No matter what happens, it's going to be more American money for the rebuilding of Ukraine. And it's not really, you might consider it American money because we, the taxpayers, have to suffer mm-hmm. as a result of the siphoning. <clears throat> but 
you know, uh, you might also argue that it's global money on loan to us. Like the Federal Reserve loans us promissory notes. They don't. Have, we, that's in 1913, man. They took our our ability to create our own money away from us and gave it to this quasi private company called the Federal Reserve that gives us promissory notes that will promise to pay them their their money back. So all this U.S. dollar stuff is just confiscated the gold. Benny Johnson's got to bounce. I've got to bounce. He's taking off. We got a whole team here, and we got to right go. On. We Thanks go. for coming in. We're gonna go. we're, uh, we're just. Uh, I'm sending messages back and forth, and Vivek's team just says, "Give us a few minutes. Give a few, give us a few minutes." And it's they're they're an hour behind, but I can't blame them. They're running a caucus. It is what it is. But Benny, thanks I will for leave you here to fight the new globalist world neocon order. Thank you. Thanks, man. And, and I, of course, I will join you at any time. We do have Philip. Freedom Tunes is one of the best YouTube channels oh, in, you. on earth. Please subscribe, and then please also subscribe <laughs> to Benny Johnson. Thanks for hanging out, man. Oh, always a pleasure. More of what's awesome popping to see in. You. Good Great to see better. you guys. That was Phil, fun. Phil Labonte is going to jump in. He's been sitting there waiting. Good, because he's got the and, answers. And uh, in, in about 10 minutes, we're going to jump to, I, I will call them the uh, physical super chats of the people who are hanging out who want to ask questions to everybody we got hanging out. Uh, there were several uh, politicians who were slated to stop by who did not make it, unfortunately. I'm not surprised, though, considering the weather, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. We came down, and uh, Vivek, of course, was uh, supposed to be here at 745. And, uh, you know, what, what, what are you going to do about it? He's out campaigning, trying to get people to caucus for him. It is what it is. It be what it do. And, uh, uh, okay, it sounds like he's not coming. Aww. So is that he's not coming? He is not coming. Aww. Well, I'm, I'm not surprised. I'm going to be completely honest. Coming in fourth place with 7.7% after all the work he did, I don't know what he would be doing Right now, yeah. Anyway. I how many vote? How many? How, how many of the with votes are in? Thir with thirty-seven percent of the votes in, Donald Trump with twenty-two thousand, Ron with eight eight thousand five, Nikki Haley with eighty-one, She's right behind him, and Vivek Ramaswamy with three thousand two hundred fifty-nine. So, mm. I kind of figured this might might be. Uh, That's unfortunate. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, I thought it was going to be a victory speech I, I was for him. He'd be right. Second kind of per per perhaps he was thinking he was going to do better, and now his priorities are not in coming on a live show to talk about how he's actually losing. I mean, mm -hmm. I. I agree, and I, I get it, but at the same time, I mean, I guess maybe this is just looking at the bright side. He beat Chris Christie, and Chris Christie's, you know, a well-known name. He's hard to beat. Yeah, no, it's his true. His yeah, first run at, at, yeah. at, you know, politics and stuff. Could you though? could you imagine Christie actually trying to come out here and go to all the districts? Uh, I don't. I, the memes. I don't think anybody worked as hard as Vivek did mm -hmm. in no. order to, uh, uh, you know, get the, the amount of support that he did. So that's admirable. Look. Vivek was trying to convince Trump, Trump supporters to vote for him. Yeah. That's, that's a ridiculous proposition in the long run. The plan B strategy makes sense. He's waiting in the wings. He's the bench for 2028 or something like that. I like the idea. But going to Trump, Trump supporters and saying, save Trump by voting for me is just like, it, it's, uh, come on, man. It's just not going to work. Uh, especially this early. Uh, you know, he's still got a ways until he starts actually having to show up in court and stuff like that. So there's still... You know, it's not set in stone that he's not going to be on the ballot. Although, I mean, personally, I, I think that it's likely that there'll be a lot of efforts to keep him off the ballot and whatever they can do, they'll do. But I, I don't think that it's compelling to the average voter because I think you're, you're, the average Trump supporter is currently still thinking he's going to he's going to be able to beat the charges. You know, mm -hmm. I, I wonder what the so when we were planning this whole thing out, the original idea was to come just for today. And uh, we ultimately decided because of the debate with uh, Vivek, we would do this town hall and, you know, have him on. And so it ended up working out really, really, really well. But I'm genuinely curious as to, I mean, I, I'll just say it. Like when we were planning this, Vivek said he would come on the show on Monday following the caucus. I'm wondering what changed with the results, what they expected, what happened on the road. Perhaps it's weather. I don't know. But as to why they're like, we're not going to make it do the show without him. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, OK, probably this 8%. I mean, it's a gut punch to anyone that was supporting that guy and had hope. That's like. Yo, he worked really, really hard. He did hard. work really hard. He, he went to harder. every county, I think, more I than once. Great. I mean, Twice. Luke, Twice. You, were, you were on the road with them two days ago, like 16 hours? 17 hours. 17 hours on the road. Yep. And you guys drove all over the state? What did you do? What did you do wrong, Luke? <laughs> No, they drove three hours away to six different events and then three hours back, which turned into more like eight hours back because there was a blizzard. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So we got the super chat. I think it's interesting. Uh -huh. Richard Contini Jr. said, I just left the caucus. Ron showed up. The speaker for Nikki was a Democrat. Trump 2024, <laughs> let's go. It's wow. hilarious. Yeah. Wow. Phil, what's the solution, man? Solution to what? Uh, bypassing <laughs> the New World Order, creating a 
global order that represents American values. You're asking yeah, the Phil. most. Yeah. You're asking the most black pilled person sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh that's that's I, I'm I'm dubious National as to divorce. if there is a solution. Um but I do think I do think that it's not gonna be politicians. I think that it's gonna gonna be a situation where you have to have people that are not looking to the government to do things for them. And that's gonna be that's something that starts with parents and the way they raise their kids and and it starts with culture and it starts you yeah. know, it's not as as much as I think it's important to have the right people uh, in positions of power just because of the fact that if you have the wrong people in positions of power, they're going to impose things on your life that you're not interested in, uh, you know, things that you know, even even the fact that they want to impose things on you is bad. Yeah. If they want to impose things on anyone is bad. So, it, go ahead. No, 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 just I'll, I'll wrap your idea and then I'm going to jump. It's just that, I mean, you know, you, that's just, I, I, I lost where I was going, so go ahead. I, Did I, any, I, yeah. Go ahead. I, I'm going to ask a, question, a different question. Finish your point. I don't want to. If you believe voting is going to save you, you're not paying attention. Yeah. We need something more than just voting. We need to take personal responsibility for our lives, which I think is That's... more important than anything else. Yeah. And that is, you know, Mike Cernovich had a great tweet a long time ago. He said, make money, you know, like imp- uh, raise your family, protect your kids. And that's the first step, something that affects. And he's right. After that, I think culture building, inspiring people, generate uh, what, what Vivek is doing going around and spreading this message to all of these young people is extremely effective yep. for the next generation. So that's f- absolutely fantastic. I'm wondering, however, if DeSantis, Haley, Ramaswamy, and even Trump, if anyone expected the race to be called literally like 20 minutes in yeah. with less than 1% reporting, 200 votes come in, they go, hey, he won. It's over. I can't imagine anybody anticipated that. That was shocking at 1%. I know. We were, maybe that's why Vivek's team is like, look, it's going to be 745. The results haven't come in yet. We'll come and talk about it, cross our fingers. Now it's like you've lost already. And they're like, well, let's go to the party, I guess. This uh, is set. What were you saying? I have a question. So when they called it, they called it at 1%. Were people, less they, than they, 1%. Less than 1%. So, so people hadn't even voted yet. Could that have been no, like— No, they did. They did. Well, no, it was uh, Jeremy Redfern who said that he was oh, in right, a district right, right. that hadn't voted yet. So could that be a form of election interference to say everybody just go home? No point now. It's called. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's good actually point. a good point. Yeah. I, if If the— that's actually a really. And that's good where Redfern said it was rigged. I mean, he's talking about that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, what's the point? Like, if you're waiting at the caucus and then you know you're yeah. you're you hear that called. Trump already won, you're Trump like, well, won. it's cold. Pops I'm up done. on your phone, says Trump won, then everybody goes home. I mean, that that just wow. seemed a little sketchy to me. Yeah. I, wow. Wow. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, I don't like that. That's. But I don't it, think that's why. Uh, the that, results are the results. No, the no, that, I, that's I, not why. I, I have a feeling the powers that be or these the people, whatever you want to call it, I don't know what it is, this deep state thing, that they 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 know Trump's going to get the votes. Mm-hmm. They've, get, they've accepted that. They think Ramaswamy will actually disentangle the system, so they don't want to even give him name recognition. Mm-hmm. And so they're letting Trump get the numbers, and then they're going to try and find some way to make him stub his own toe. And then we got, I guess, Ron and Nikki to battle it out. I mean, going back to what you were talking about earlier with like a, a global, a globalist agenda, but with American values, I, I, I don't think that that's, mm-hmm. that's possible just because the globalist agenda is inherently like socialist and the socialist agenda goes against our instinct to put ourselves first or our families first. It, it says you have to share everything, you know, and that's it's just not a natural instinct. So I, I, real quick, I pulled up the polling from Iowa from 538, the aggregate polling from 538. And Haley was actually expected to defeat Ron DeSantis by a couple points. So far at 40 percent, Ron is winning. I don't know if that means anything, but uh, we'll, it, it does seem to be uh, trending exactly as the polls predicted, which is kind of crazy considering what Vivek was doing, going around and meeting people. And that the fact that he was winning first time voters, it's fascinating. The polls are as accurate as they are. He spent, I think, 16 million. I'm, I don't want to get the number wrong, but he spent his own money, and I think it was that. But this is just an example that mass of the power of mass media. Hitler rose to power because of radio and TV. Like the guy, you can well, drive and spend 15 hours a day every day, but if you're not using mass media, yeah. But think about, I mean, think about. It's first of all, it's Donald Trump who had like 100 percent name recognition before he won the presidency in 2016. Yeah, and then you know you've got. All of the things that have happened since he won the first one. I mean, it's not a surprise. Obviously, it's not a surprise that he won tonight. And it really, if you think about it, it shouldn't come as a shock that he won by such a large margin. You know, he's, again, his name recognition is almost 100%. And the majority of Republicans 
think that there was at least something unfair about the last election. They they all kind of well, I assume most Republicans kind of agree that all of the different things, all of the mail in ballots, all the sending out ballots to people, all that stuff changed the dynamic so much that it wasn't a, a standard election. And had it been a standard election, it's likely that Donald Trump would have won. So I I don't think that this should come as any kind of shock, you know? When Time Magazine uh, explained that there was a shadow campaign to fortify the election against Trump, <laughs> I, that I was... think it became clear to most most <laughs> all of them, actually. Oh, Tim's going to pull it up good. This I remember is... when I saw that the first time, I was shocked, and I showed a friend, and his reply was, well, you know, that's politics. And I was like, I was flabbergasted that he said that. I was like, that's really how you understand this, as that's just politics. They're saying that the government itself was working against the incumbent president, and you're just like, well, that's politics. No, no, well, no. what's interesting is the headline. The voters of the country. Fair enough, yeah. The yeah. headline, the secret history of the shadow campaign. Yeah. Yeah. History. That I was, saved. This oh is established. I, I was astounded. I couldn't mm -hmm. believe it. I couldn't believe that they had the audacity to print that. And then, like I said, when I told my you know, fairly blue-pilled buddy, I was like, do you see this? And he's like, yeah, well, that's politics. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm going to shoot myself. You know, the reason I think that a global order <laughs> that uh, embodies American constitutional ideals is possible mm -hmm. is because of the way we've built the United States. It's such a vast territory, but we were able to unify 50 different concepts into one kind of unif gigantic, which would have been thought totally impossible uh, before the advent of electricity and or discovery of electricity and, I, and advent of radio. I, this article is extremely important for everyone who's never heard heard of to read. It outright says a conspiracy was unfolding behind the scenes to cr uh, one that both curtailed protests and coordinated the resistance from CEOs. They say, quote, within days after the election, we witnessed an orchestrated effort to anoint the winner while many key states were still being counted. That's from Trump. Mm. They say he was right. A conspiracy was unfolding behind the scenes. Handshake between business and labor was one co component of a vast cross-partisan campaign to, quote, protect the election. An extraordinary shadow effort dedicated not to winning the vote, but to ensuring it would be free and fair, hmm. credible oh, and uncorrupted. Off. How? He's, this is the epitome of, of corruption and evil. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is incredible how dystopian it is. I, it is, it's almost... It's so audacious that you kind of feel like no one would write this in a comic book, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. because no one would believe it. Everyone would be like, no, that's too. They would, no they would never yeah. do that. Then then think, write it. Well, you know, yeah. brag to, about to, to it. Be, to be fair, I think didn't Lex Luthor win the presidency legitimately? Probably. In, oh, wow. I think that I could be wrong. Like in a movie, if a villain did that, they would be talking about it in a boardroom. Not writing an article and putting it online. That, that that they put that online. That they admitted it. That was yeah. their dystopian victory lap. Yeah, they, that, they yep. like it was yep. like you know you know the evildoers in every single movie before they lose they tell the they sell their their dastardly plan to their victim. That's yeah, right. and then then the animals show up and, and kill them. Well, the, what happens? But they they waited till after their corruption unfolded and then told us all their plan. So I mean, this is what we can expect. This is what they do. It's do literally we, them saying, "Do something about it." Why don't it's, we? Uh, it's, it's just them being like, "This is what we did," and you have no, There's nothing you can do about it. Mm -hmm. We're gonna go to our live version of Super Chats. Cool. And we're gonna Love ask uh, audience questions. Clint. Yo, Russell. Clint Russell. What up? How's it going, buddy? The microphone. If you and, guys uh, could, if anybody wants to ask a question, just like lightly raise your hand. We will, don't want to have people queue up. But if you just... slip a five in and, Ian's pants, and, and I will, and, uh, I will, I will just say for everybody who's here. Uh, We'll try to keep it family friendly, but ask away. We didn't pre-screen anything. We're just going to let people sort of ask their questions. Don't get us demonetized. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm more worried about the children, but also, yes, we like money, too. <laughs> What's your name? My name is Skyler. I just got verified on Twitter. The, the Pow Mia Man. The oh, nice. nice. Oh, nice. Congrats, and your question, sir. So this is a question for Luke. Um, as you can see, I'm wearing my trans-vaccinated shirt. I know you're anti-vax. Um, will you stand up for all the Z's and Zers that are trans-vaxxed? Uh, as long as you're not uh, um, uh, sh uh, shedding on me, I, I think we should be fine. <laughs> and uh, not, not aggressing against me in any way uh, will be cool. You know, as, no, as no we, all, we all just have to follow the non-aggression principle. 
and everybody can get along, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And and if you if you shed your you know. Um, the, the anyway, <laughs> you're stuck. I, I got I'm stuck. Sure, I, I want to uh, say some yeah, things I can't say on this platform, <laughs> but uh, yeah, as long as you don't uh, violate my nap, I won't violate your nap. Yeah, and we should respect ideas. everyone for who they are, especially if they are free human beings that do awesome things and don't spread bad things to other people. We also we also I'll keep, do it, have, keep it at that. We also have regular super chats as well, but I don't know if there's any other any, anyone else. Um, but thank you for your question. I just got a, a message. Somebody said Nancy Pelosi biographer wrote that Time article. Molly Ball. Why will no one say this out loud? It was her. Pelosi told the story to her, I'd bet. Sick. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. it's what? it's Molly Ball on the yeah. Time article. That awesome. is who it is by. Yep. So yeah. that's who that's who it is. Yep. Your name, sir. Kyle. Hey, and Kyle. your question. Uh how do you how do like normal people how are they supposed to like consume so much media without becoming black billed? Mm. You gotta find like ways in your day to day life that keep you sane. Like working out, sauna, um, communication with friends and things that's like about real stuff like where the, your food and like that that's one way to do it i think i mean if we're talking about you're consuming legitimate media that is reporting honestly black pilling is an ind individual state of mind which i would agree with ian you've got to improve yourself center yourself figure it out because i think if you're actually consuming all of the media we got tons of reasons to be optimistic I know Phil said he's the most black person, uh, black pilled, most black person, <laughs> the most black pilled person here. That too, brother. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I mean, we're looking at l l all these tremendous victories of the last year, and now Nikki Haley's, you know, humiliating defeat to Ron DeSantis. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was like, we got reasons to be optimistic. Not, Ron's not going to win either, but with, uh, uh, I mean, Bud Light boycott, Target, et cetera, et cetera, it's just looking better and better. I mean, look, the fact that Vivek even did as well as he did. And the hard work he's putting in, there is a, a bright future for uh, for us. I think we win this. It's going to be hard, but I think we win. Yeah. Lift heavy thing makes sad voice stop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd, <laughs> I'd go further uh, just to, to what, what they were saying is uh, make sure you have purpose. Make sure you, you, you love something greater than yourself, and uh, it's, it's easy to not get black-pilled. Celebrate the small victories and understand that a corruption is being exposed, which is a good thing that you're finally being made aware of. I'm going to read a super chat real quick, and then we'll jump to this question. Paul Tascolo says, when Vivek called out eminent domain carbon pipeline, they basically deleted him. I was an... Uh, how do I scroll on this thing? It's, I don't know if it's letting me scroll here on YouTube. Let me zoom out so I can get the full thing. I was an ED lawyer... For three years, it's deeply corrupt. Everyone is paid off, layered at every level, local, county, state, and federal, and courts. There's a big issue in Iowa that most people nationally don't know about, trying to st seize land for, I believe it's to build this pipeline. Is that it? I'm not sure what pipeline, but I, I agree. Eminent domain is, is really, right. really bad, in my opinion. And Vivek came out, called it out, said, no, you can't do this. Yeah. And then he's just, then he doesn't appear on the polls or the charts anymore. What's your name, sir? My name's David. Hey, David. Hey, I live in Arkansas now. I came up here hopefully to meet Vivek and a little bigger celebration than we had, but that's all good. I was living in Des Moines um, in, 18, in 1988. 1988. <laughs> <laughs> and I happened to hear Rush Limbaugh uh, the third day he was on the air I, picking up a VP for a company down at, at the airport. And, and I was a nobody, like I am, not, am now still. And, uh, and he spoke to me. Um, he passed away uh, basically when Biden took office and you came into my life. And I just want to thank you um, for being kind of a boomer thing, perhaps, but you are the new voice for me that kind of Rush was. And I just kind of interested in um, if he had any influence on you, your thoughts on him. Uh, I know it's a little generational, but. Yeah, I, I never listened to, listened to Rush once. The only exposure I've ever had to Rush Limbaugh was when he cameoed on Family Guy. That was about it. <laughs> but uh, I, I, my understanding is he's, he's basically the progenitor of talk radio. And uh, so mad, massive respect. Yeah, I don't know about any, anyone else here. I don't. Oh, yeah. When I was a kid, my parents yeah. used to blare that. For real? <laughs> when, uh, that theme song is burned into my yeah. head for all of eternity. <laughs> you all are doing a pretty good job of channeling his energy, and I want to thank you for that. Uh, During thanks for coming. I appreciate like, it. During impeachment in, in the uh, late 90s, I remember listening to Rush a lot talking about the impeachment stuff for wow. Bill Clinton. My child was like, I thought he was a, the bad guy. Because I was like, oh, he's the hateful conservative, <laughs> the Republican guy. And my dad yeah. voted for Clinton, so I didn't know any better. But I appreciate what he did big time now. 
Right on. What's Next your name, up? sir? Uh, my name's Roy. And question? Yeah, the question is, uh, so um, it's pretty much been established that Nikki Haley is the establishment candidate. Mm -hmm. um, you think? What do you suppose is going to happen with her voters? Because I know uh, personally uh, a, a few people that are Haley fans, and they call Trump a felon. Uh, and I don't know if they're going to really vote at all this uh, election cycle if, if Haley isn't the nominee. So what do but you, how do you think? Who, who, how do you, do you, have you asked them like why they're fans of Haley? Because they hate Trump. Yeah, yep. but then they could yep. be a fan of Ron DeSantis. He doesn't even come up in their in their conversations. Nikki Haley. Yeah. yeah, the mainstream media pushed her so hard the last four months. That's right. To Clinton voters, all the Hillary Clinton voters. My parents are talking about her, and they're like Democrats. I it's crazy. I don't think they understood her connection with Boeing and the military industrial complex. And oh, but yeah, but I mean, war hawk. Democrats there, love that Democrats stuff. Democrats that yeah. are. You it's know. look. I I, I kind of feel like if a Nikki Haley voter a voter is not going to vote, then we dodged a bullet. Mm -hmm. Let's let let's encourage all the Nikki Haley voters not to vote if it's Donald Trump. We don't, <laughs> you know, take their because it was what they're going to vote for Biden. Uh, actually, this is what um, was it? I think Bruce Woods was pointing out. Elad Eliyahu, who does reporting for SCNR.com, produced several videos coming out of the Haley campaign uh, uh, events where he just uh, these are not gotcha questions. He's not a partisan guy. He's got his political opinions for sure. That he calls himself the Bolton bro, but he goes and he asks, you know, why do you support Nikki Haley? If Nikki Haley is not the nominee, it's looking like Trump will be. Who will you vote for? They say Joe Biden. So, and they'll probably vote for Biden. But I think that doesn't matter. If you look at the polls, we're looking right now at the Iowa polls, and they're 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 fairly accurate. I mean, they're they're hitting the nail on the head. And that's surprising. I thought Vivek actually was going to beat the polls because he was playing uh, this ground game with younger voters. Uh, so far, it's he's tracking trending with the polls. So we'll see how that plays out. But I think if we're looking at the polls and they are as accurate as they've been, younger voters are going for Trump. Joe Biden cannot win. When they put Trump up against Nikki Haley Ron, and Ron DeSantis, they, they, they have uh, some of the latest polls showing what's the percentage going to be Trump v. Biden, DeSantis v. Biden, Haley v. Biden. They all win. Biden loses to every single person. So I, don't, I, I think Vivek is right about their play. Nikki Haley is their candidate, not Joe Biden. We're all talking about, oh, you know, Joe Biden's going to get sick in March. Maybe. And then maybe they do tap Newsom or something. But the question then becomes, how do you get rid of Kamala Harris? If Biden drops out, Kamala's next in line, right? It's simple. Vivek's right. Nikki Haley is how you get past Kamala Harris. Have your establishment candidate run as a Republican against Trump, and the real election is the primary. Yeah, she's the uniparty. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, man. So I'm glad to see Trump winning, and I hope that remains the case. But... You know what I think, too? Everybody's gearing up for the shadow campaign of 2024. Yo, the shadow campaign may be happening right now. Yep. It, the shadow campaign, we're going to get an article in 2025, and we're all shocked Nikki Haley's the president, and it's going to be like the shadow campaign to win 2024 through the GOP primary. Yep. Oof. Yep. Name in your question, sir? Uh, my name's Jay. It's, it's kind of spelled like the letter, but a little different. Um, <laughs> so... Looking at Trump, you have a 77-year-old who is political poison for some people with the entire deep state weaponized against him. And the CIA has heart attack guns. I mean, not related. But <laughs> Thanks, Luke. <laughs> That's true. That's old tech. So if he is taken down, uh, what, what names are you looking at as uh, people that are up and coming? Who, who would you attach yourself to? Oh, Vivek. Chris Christie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah, I would. His plan to invade Candyland is one of the most brilliant <laughs> foreign policy interventions I've ever heard. I don't know. Ryan Binkley looks pretty promising. Number five, right there. Well, hold on. Do we know anything about Binkley's platform? I know he oh. got 266 votes to Christie's 16. So. Like, what if he's just like a really nice guy who yeah. loves his like who loves his state and was being you know? He the, wasn't even running. He's just a really nice guy. and everyone wrote him knows in. him. Like, <laughs> like, is he on the belt? Yeah, no, but everybody knows him. He's a good dude. Yeah. Oh, I think Vivek's the obvious. Yeah. Uh, 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 pitch. The dude is such a hardworking guy. He's brilliant, and he's he's, he's got some some of the most libertarian uh, uh, pitches that we've seen in any Republican candidate. So I, I don't see anybody else right now. I mean, I don't think Matt Gates is going in that direction. Matt Gates is pretty awesome, mm -hmm. but I, who else is there? JD Vance is pretty cool too. Yeah, Vance is doing well. Yeah. He's 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 a good dude. I like Vivek not only for his libertarian, but he's very constitutional. If you've seen him speak, he talks about the founding documents, the founding mm -hmm. fathers. He knows his history, which which I appreciate. And he knows the real history because everything kind of got switched around in the 60s, if you don't know that. But he knows the real stuff, and that, that speaks to integrity. 
I do like um, a lot of people starting to, be, starting to bring up that DEI is the natural evolution. I like to call it DIE. It's way better. Because mm-hmm. DEI means God and die means death. So mm-hmm. we'll go with that one. But it's the natural evolution of the civil rights uh, laws. Mm. And it sort of is. It's the extreme version of them. But I always tell people just because someone corrupted a thing doesn't mean that thing was always bad. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, look, you know, maybe cake is good, but if you're eating cake every single day, it's bad. Yeah. We, we pass laws saying we don't want people to discriminate or whatever, and there are certain limitations to it. Like, back when they passed this bill, nobody thought they'd get rid of women's sports. Well, I don't know that they had women's sports at the time, but nobody thought they would be like, you know, males can use female bathrooms. That's not the intent. But then you get this corruption through nefarious forces, which start breaking things down, which proves the law is meaningless. The only thing that matters is what a society is willing to accept. And we mentioned a lot. There's these laws on the books, and there are blue laws, some, some of them are called, that were made back in the day that no one follows anymore. Like the favorite gag one, which I think is no longer in, in play, was women can't go skydiving on Sunday in Florida. <laughs> I think that's – I read about that like it's been overturned or whatever, but there were weird laws like that. No cop's going to arrest a woman for skydiving in Florida on Sunday. They should. But when you look at uh, you know, the civil rights law and where it's at right now, we're surprised to see how it's being implemented and I think a lot of this has to do with uh, originalism versus textualism. People who are like, if it says regulated and today regulated, this is the stupidest argument in the world. I mean, these people are just despicable. The Second Amendment says a well-regulated militia. Well, we know what the Founding Fathers meant when they wrote it, but because today regulated means government control, that's what it means. That's the stupidest idea I've ever heard. Why that's on earth? Why, why after winning a war? where the Redcoats confiscated ammo and guns from the people of Massachusetts. Why on earth would the Founding Fathers be like, yeah, you know what? We should have the government regulate our guns. That's what we're going to do. That is just so dumb. So dumb. The percentage of votes in went down by 1%. Did Nikki Haley's number go down? It did a lot. Good. Yeah. They just pulled a bunch of votes back. That is sketchy. Wait. Remember when this happened on CNN and everyone said it was rigged? Hmm. There's like the, the vote count for Trump changed. And I'm like, people are saying, how did that happen? I'm like, uh, maybe the uh, AP doing the official reporting said we made a mistake and, and pulled it back or clicked cancel. I don't know. But it was at 39%. Haley was at 8,000. Now she's at 7,000. So I have no idea what that means. But, you know, how fun. Nikki Haley's vo- votes went down. I've Good. got her at 9,300. You're at 9,300? Yeah. So on, 40, on 40 bound delegates. Where are you at? Four? I'm Four, on the New 40, York Times. 40. I'm on CNN. CNN has Nikki Haley with 40 delegates? No, no. Uh, th- there are 40 bound. So right, far. right. I was and like, what? she's at 9,300 votes. Huh. Interesting. I wonder, I wonder, the New York Times is just uh, is breaking. All right. Let's get another question in there. Name and your question. She has five bound delegates. My name's delegates. Lucas Carter. I have kind of a two-part question. Uh, so do you, especially Luke, have any uh, thoughts on the similarity between Vivek's campaign and Ron Paul, say 2008, 12? Hmm. And do you think uh, as he gets older and is kind of getting out of the picture more, I grew up off of his ideals. Uh, do you see him possibly being a Gen Z replacement? It, at the beginning of this election, I always told everyone that what matters here is not who gets the votes. It's the ideas that get pushed. It's the Overton window that gets pushed. Um, I think Vivek's doing a great job at that. There's a lot of Ron Paul people that are within his campaign. There's a lot of Ron Paul people that I met on the campaign trail. So th- there is a crossover here as, of course, a lot of the same ideas, not all of them, but, but some of these great ideas of, of you know, freedom, of, of, you know, liberty, personal responsibility are being shared here. And those ideas, especially in the minds of young people, are critically important. So uh, I do see a lot of crossover. I do see a lot of actual people that were Ron Paul people here on the ground be a part of the, the Vivek campaign as well. So, so there is some crossover. Uh, foreign policy-wise, there, there's, there's a lot of uh, d- difference, especially when it comes to Mexico and, and, and China. Uh, but but over but overall, um, th- there is kind of a larger kind of um, a- energy that does resonate very similarly. Censorship. And and what? Censorship. As far as. In terms of the. the media oh yeah 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 yeah, and then also what 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 it what kind of happened to him earlier Ron happened Paul to Ron Paul, yeah. uh, many many years ago, as of course the corporate media was against him, and uh, rigging the process against him in many unfair ways. Now to be fair, CNN.com has this little widget in the left that only has Trump, DeSantis, and Haley. But when you click it, they don't hide Vivek Ramaswamy. He's included in their list with Asa Hutchinson behind him. So I got to give CNN credit. The people who are running, they put him in there. What was that? 
Where's Chris? There, where's Chris? Christy? You're not running. Ry, Ryan, the the what the, the, those other guys. His mm-hmm. plan to invade Candyland. Did you write that like that last night? So you were good. waiting to. Say I was that. waiting to say it. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> when am I gonna be able to get that zinger out there? When he funded the coup against the gumdrop princess. I just thought that was <laughs> absolutely insane. They're like liberated the the fudge swamp. Remember that clip where it was who it was like who was it who asked him? She's like, uh, you're very overweight. Why should you be president? <laughs> and he's like, Whoa. He's like Barbara Walters. I yeah, it's a Barbara yeah, Walters. I think so. Doing hard. And she was like, some say you shouldn't be president because everybody's like, oh, that's ridiculous. She's like, Barbara? why are you so heavy? And he's like, if I knew, I would fix it. Or <laughs> why? That's such like, a sad answer. I mean, it might. I tried everything. <laughs> There's a clip of Ron Paul telling a guy in the audience that he's fat and he needs to lose weight. I remember that. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 Well, he's a doctor. He said Brilliant. maybe the government should put you on a diet. Yeah. Is that. that what he said? Yes. Yeah, because the guy was like talking about how government should take care of Oh, right. He was so bad. He was so mad. And then Ron Paul's like, you're bad. The government should put you on a diet. Great. Chris yeah, Christie actually got gastric bypass and just blasted right through it. I'm, I'm impressed, it's honestly. It's true. Uh, <laughs> your name and your question, sir. Yeah, I'm James. I came down from uh, Minnesota. I had some time to waste in the hotel. And right I on. turned on MSNBC just to see what they were talking about. And I think it was Maddow said the one feature of the Iowa caucus is anyone can go and, and vote or caucus for in the Republican primaries, even if they don't typically identify as a Republican. Uh, yep. <laughs> So, wow. That, that, that's, that was a component of their plan. There was also, wasn't there some scandal where, like, DeSantis' team said people from out of state should show up or something like that? I yep. remember something like what that. Was, what yeah. was that about? I, it, it, was like, it was like Ron's wife or something, right? Yeah, it was misinformation for sure. Like, real yeah. misinformation, not, not, not the other stuff. Yeah, don't do that. I'm pretty sure that's illegal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What up? Is that I, an Aaron Rodgers? No, it's not Aaron Rodgers on the Jets now, right? Mm-hmm. Randall Cobb. Oh, okay. He's on the Jets too now. But. Oh, all right. Well, you know. So my name is uh, Jason Heitman. Tim, you're the first person in my entire life to get my name right on the first try. When oh. I super chatted. <laughs> yeah. Those substitute teachers really made my prepubescent life hell. Maybe they're doing it on purpose, though. No. They say, like, jazzin, and then <laughs> oh. everyone laughs at me and stuff. J-A-A-Z-A-N. Huh. But, um... So my question, well, I was really complaining about my state politics here. I'm from Wisconsin, obviously, and um, no one's really talking about what's going on in our state right now. I feel like we're losing our state. Last election. I do too. Last election, um, not a lot of turnout on the conservative side. We elected a Supreme Court justice for our state, a liberal, and she ran on the fact that our maps are gerrymandered. And now they just decide that our maps are unconstitutional. They're going to redraw the maps for this next election, and all of our congressional seats are going to be up for re-election. Why wow, all of them? That's what I heard. Wow. Um, it could, you know, take that grain of salt, they, but they, that's why I heard. Gerrymander a state? What's that? Mm, you, no. They gerrymandered a state. They no. say that our our maps are gerrymandered uh-huh. towards the yeah. conservatives uh-huh. after the last census that we gerrymandered them. Oh. So now instead we always do it every census as we redraw the maps. Right now they're saying they're gerrymandered, unconstitutional. Now there's a liberal right. majority in Supreme Court. They're overturning it, and they need to r- draw new maps by the next election. This could be why the RNC is going to be in Milwaukee. Mm-hmm. So that'll be interesting. I think there's going to be a push for Wisconsin. It's a very important state to not let Democrats take over. But yeah. yo, if they pull that, they're taking over. Yeah. It's a very purple state. I mean, where where I live, it's really half. I live by uh, UW Oshkosh. It's like the north end of the city is very liberal because of the college and then south end is very conservative it's everywhere you go you don't know that's, who's on your yeah side. that's how that's it usually crazy. is the people who do the actual work that f- makes this country happen vote on the right and then that, the people who are in the institutionalized learning facilities vote left that's yeah. the kind of thing that the rnc should be fighting they should have lawyers they should or they should be looking to prevent that kind of stuff this is one of the reasons why ron uh, ron mcdaniels is such a failure and such a joke uh i don't know i don't know what they you know why they're not trying to play ball like trying to you know defend the 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 system as it is they this is part of the reason why Donald Trump lost is because the RNC allowed the the Democrats in Pennsylvania and stuff to change to you know unconstitutionally according to Pennsylvania's constitution change the the way that electors are sent and stuff the it's it's an absolute failure on Ronna's part and I don't know why Trump endorsed her so so frustrating. What article makes gerrymandering unconstitutional? Is that in? They, they just they said 
from the article I read, they just said that the maps are gerrymandered towards the conservative side, and that I don't know. I don't remember they need to exactly. They their maps. Got it. <laughs> so, yeah, the, I'm just I'm just scared that because we right now our our governor is um, Tony Evers. Like my dad likes to say, I don't like the Evers. And then our Congress is mostly conservative. So it's just like Evers does something, we say the con the Congress says no. Congress does something, Evers says no. There's nothing going on in our state right now. It's a constant, just stalemate. Nothing's happening. But if they start to sway their way. We're gonna start. It's gonna affect us because. We're purple. I mean, we we have good strong gun laws, but they're not getting stronger, and they could definitely go go in, in every aspect. We, so. We're gonna we're gonna win those fights at the Supreme Court mm -hmm. for a long time. I mean, the current make of the Supreme Court is is pretty good for a while. Yeah, and then another thing I'm worried about: our state's kind of being invaded by your old state, Tim. Huh. We yeah. call them fibs. I'm sure you know what that term means. What is it? Effing Illinois bastards. Oh, okay. There you go. <laughs> I don't. I don't know that because I was from Illinois. We didn't call ourselves. Yeah. That. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, especially in Madison, Milwaukee, a lot of people from Illinois are moving to Wisconsin because like, apparently our welfare benefits are better. Well, <laughs> also because Illinois is just like a failed state. So. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like it's they're they're bringing their policies with them. It was well, so scared. you should build a wall. Uh, so <laughs> we're we're planning. Uh, highly likely, we'll do another show like this in, at the RNC for that full week. So we'll probably have, like, a series of shows at some, you know, rented location and then maybe, like, a bigger show with an audience for Thursday with the final day of the RNC. And we're definitely not going to the DNC because it's in Chicago. And I feel like someone's going to get shot. Yep. I don't, I don't even – I'm, I'm kind of, like – I'm not trying to be cute, man. I, I think there's a high likelihood of, like, there's going to be riots. There's going to be serious injury. Cops are – look, at the NATO, No NATO protests, Luke and I were there. The cops arrested a group of leftist activists and detained them for like 10 days in what's called a black site. That is, it's basically a police controlled facility no one knows about where these people were detained without word. No one knew where they went. And disappeared. They were disappeared. Yeah, in Chicago, we, I, I literally that? had a cop like put a gun to my head uh, when we were pulled over. They tried planting drugs on us. Yeah. I'm not, this is yeah, not exaggeration. not a joke. That's literally what happened. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, it's a crazy story. And this really happened. Chicago is, yeah. is the whole place is so dirty. The state itself is so dirty, and the idea that there's going to be a DNC, you know, the the, the we went to the DNC at uh, I think it was what 2016. Mm -hmm. The RNC and the DNC were so fun back back during the cycles. You know, like you know Jimmy Dore spit on Alex Jones. How fun was that? We were there now, in that room. And we were as standing it happened, right there. We like, holy crap! <laughs> and that was at the RNC, but nobody protested the RNC. Nobody cared. The DNC, there were thousands of protesters trying to storm the barricades and break their way in. Yo, DNC in Chicago is going to be Nuts. bonkers. Corrupt cops, corrupt government, all Democrat controlled, gun violence. I'm not going anywhere near that place. Name in your question, sir. Uh, my name is Cameron. Before I ask my question, I'd just like to say, as a fine Irishman, I don't see how people could accuse you of stealing spoons, Seamus. Thank you. I you know, appreciate that because I wouldn't do that, and you know me. Do you, you know steal spoons that. too? Is the question. No, never do that. Thank I, you, I brother. I would never steal a spoon. As an Irishman, would know. never steal spoons. God bless you. Thank you. I, I sense a conspiracy here. Yeah, it was more of an observation. <laughs> That he did it. On top of being thieves, I, they're also liars. Do you believe it? There's a little bit of a bias on this panel. Why do we put up with this? I, I, I don't know. First, uh, the paddy wagons, now this. It's sickening. It's that really is funny they still call them that, paddy wagons. I don't think it's funny at all. I think <laughs> that's, that's funny. Really Stop drinking so much. He does think it's funny. He's laughing. Uh, no. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Uh, so with having friends that are on the left and that are pretty much in the leftist cult, how do you start them out and trying to move them over at all when you have articles like the secret history of the how they fortified the election and people that, like Phil said, think that that's a good thing? It's super easy. What you do is uh, get a bunch of them, call a bunch of your lefty friends, you get like 10 or whatever, I don't know, and tell them you've got this great idea for you know this, this cool event they should come to. Then you tell all your MAGA friends and you trick them all into the, going to the community center where you lock the doors and make them stay there overnight so they become friends. Yeah. That's all you do. Uh, or you can talk to them. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just like this, the simple answer is kind of boring. Uh, ask them questions, the Socratic method. If you argue with them and tell them that they're wrong or insult them, they'll get angrier. So if you have friends who are on the left, you can be like, you know, 
whenever they say something, just pull up on your phone a source from a, like, this is why I always like using CNN and NPR and their sources. I like using corporate press sources to debunk what they're saying. And I, I often tell people, too, they're like, the media never reported this thing. I'll be like, dude, I pulled it up on the New York Times. They reported on it. It's just the, the, the Democrat establishment forces will ignore stories from the corporate press. So if, uh, if, if someone claims Joe Biden never did insert thing, I'm going to make sure the report comes from CNN because then they can't deny it. So it's things like that. Other than that, it's tough. The reality is to, to change someone's mind and help them understand, you need to surround them with people who will influence them. You can, if you reorient people towards kind of what Occupy Wall Street was about, which is international banking, like that really is the biggest threat to our way of life is corporate um, I, totalitarianism, technocracy. So there is a, there is something that all, all Americans can focus on, at least most Americans can focus on that we can agree with that like having corporations run our lives is not ideal. And you, yeah. And you have to be gentle with how you do it because these people yeah. since at least 2012, 2013 with the NDAA, they haven't been told they were wrong yeah. in a very mm -hmm. long time. You have They've to had their confirmation bias inflated for 12 straight years. She's right. You have to let them come to it. So mm -hmm. like present them with the idea and then allow them. Don't try to make them change their mind. Don't try to change anyone's mind. You'll never, ever do it. Present them with stuff that conflicts with their preconceived notion and just let it go. Just let them and like, you know, don't constantly do it. But every once in a while, be like, oh, you see this or something like that. And let them change at their own pace. If they feel like you're trying to convince them of anything, the walls go up, the heels get dug in the dirt. Just let them change. There's a dude that I'm very, very close with that is very anti-Trump and very, very blue pilled. After Joe Biden was elected and after he saw the results, his tone about politics is 100% different than it was right before, uh, right before Joe Biden was elected, and it is much easier to talk to him. But you can't. I ne you never try and shove anything down anyone's throat. Never try and make anyone see things a different way. Always just give them the option. Real quick, just uh, with the data coming out of the New York Times, a lot more of the uh, voters come in. There still is a slim possibility, based on their estimates, that Nikki Haley beats Ron DeSantis. They're projecting Haley between 17 and 21 percent to DeSantis' 19 to 23. I don't think it's likely. And uh, uh, Vivek is still sitting around uh, 8. They expect him to hit around 7 to 9. Interestingly, Nikki Haley did end up losing Johnson County, which was uh, uh, supposedly this uh, very you know, liberal area. Trump, Trump won. Nick, uh, Nikki Haley currently has Story County. And I would also say it's kind of sad. Uh, we actually saw Vivek doing rather well, but I'm not sure if Vivek actually has any counties in third place. I, I see him I, with one bound delegate. Which is good. But I think, okay, here we go. He's in third place in Appanoose County mm -hmm. so far uh, and uh, the neighboring Wayne County. So he does have some where he's in third place. You scrolled over Polk County earlier. Where, where's that at? Uh, it's below Des Moines. Somewhere below there. Uh, Congressman Massey had tweeted that or had shouted out that uh, – um, DeSantis won it, but you when you pulled it up, it was... Um, you sure it's below? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Oh, okay, it is sure. the one, right. Okay, yeah. Yeah, Trump. Yeah, it was for Trump. Uh, Thomas Massey said that it was for DeSantis. What? Um, yeah, I, I guess he got early results, and it, it wasn't, though. <laughs> Massey, Massey, what a silly thing to tweet. I know. Yeah, tisk, tisk. We still love you. It's okay. Your question, man? Um, my name is Julie. I'm visiting here from Nebraska, and um, I just needed to represent the ladies. I don't know if you guys noticed that there's about a six or seven to one ratio out here of guys. So. I have not I, noticed I, this I, at all. I bring that up all the time, don't I? Beard. No, I, 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 I point that out on the show several times. Like, you go to any, like, event, sporting event or whatever, it's always, like, eight, eight to two. Four to one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in a metal band. Um, I'm you actually really politically like. um, active in my in Nebraska, and so I, and and then I've come up here to Iowa to um, work with the team Trump events, and um, I've also been able to go to a RFK Junior event in Nebraska and a the um, Vivek's um, event here last week on or on Wednesday, and I just wanted to point out there's a lot of energy at a lot of these events, but um, they're not people from Iowa. The Iowa people, yeah. I think, are, you know, you can't judge by what you see in the crowds. Um, I think that they get oversaturated. Um, I've done the caucus cards, and uh, 
There was a couple events where most of the crowd was from Nebraska, South Dakota, and these other states. So I think uh, there is energy for Vivek. Um, it's just not all centered in in Iowa. So I think he he has uh, the potential to to do better um, in the future. But uh, I love going to these events, but they're very 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 deceiving when you a lot of the people drive. You know, really long ways to come to these. Yeah, the actual amount of people from Iowa that I talked to is probably five, ten percent of the huh. of the people that I would talk to at an at an event. Well, let, let's do this. Uh, show of hands, how many people in the room right now are from Iowa? So it was like half. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe. Okay. Like currently living in Iowa. Yeah. Is that is that yeah, less? Yeah, I'd say about oh. half. Same. Get half. those about hands half. back up. About half. About half. Mm -hmm. And that makes sense. A lot of people drove drove here from neighboring states or from uh, a few hours out. Uh, I'd imagine with internet popularity, you you know, I, I've talked about this with like AOC and we were talking about it with like Civil War stuff. Back in the day, everything was much more regional. AOC is able, uh, it's not just her, the squad. If you look at where their revenue comes from, their donations, overwhelmingly from outside their own district. Mm. They're internet candidates that represent an amorphous online nebulous community with no geographic, uh, you know, center point. And even for this show, it's obvious that about half the people are from Iowa. We're in Iowa, so it's easy for them to come. Somebody who lives in New York is not going to come to this event. It's too difficult. But people from Minnesota or from Illinois or you know, slightly neighboring areas might take the drive to come visit because it's an opportunity. Same thing's going to happen to Vivek or any other internet-based candidate. I just had one more thing to the gentleman from, from Wisconsin that was talking about the, um, the state turning or being purple and um, the best way to change that is to get involved on the local level. Um, in Nebraska, we were run by pretty big rhino Pete Ricketts. I don't know. He was our governor and 75% of the funding for our party. Um, the grassroots took over um, uh, in 2022 and are changing the direction of the party and bringing in more grassroots. And there's definitely more energy, but the only way you're going to make change on that is at the local level, because that's where these laws are voting laws and um, all those procedures come from your state legislature. Yep. So don't look past um, what's going on in your local area and focus too much on what's happening um, f nationally. Yeah, Julie is absolutely right. It's, it's about getting on your school board, your sheriff's department, your select board, starting there, working your way to uh, state senate, state representative. Uh, and that that's where you're gonna make the changes. When the communists infiltrated America, they started at a very small level and they worked their way up into the prominent positions in every institution. And, and you know, if they're good at anything, um, it's, it's, it's organizing and, uh, that's what they did, and uh, we can learn something from the communists. <laughs> Tim, I know you have a heart out in 10 minutes. One more or two more? Uh, I think maybe two more if we, if we try and go sure. quick. I mean, I don't know. We have 10 minutes, but we do have a heart out. So, Name and question, sir? Uh, Alec, I actually have two questions. So oh, too many. Nope, next person. No. <laughs> yeah, you gotta, you gotta I, I want to step back to the beginning of the show. Um, you guys were talking about the tunnels in New York City. Uh, Seamus, <laughs> is it like the, the stealing of the spoons just happenstance that you dug those uh, this is tunnels? Sick. This, he, is he another used sick oh, great this is another question. sick, false accusation. I will wow. not hear it. I will <laughs> That's not hear what it. you took those spoons. All right, so my real question is, uh, we talk about dismantling the corporate government around uh, the FBI, the ATF, the CIA, and everything else. I, I love the idea about that, but I've been like reading the books on tape and so on, and there's a lot of things talking about like, uh, like the uh, dictators down in South America. Um, was it uh, Condor, Project Condor, or wherever it was? A lot of the times you'd have these systems that are being torn down and often they're being replaced in the back end through other governments basically that tear them down. What, what chances do you think if we had tear down the CIA, the ATF and all those other ones, would they just be replaced with even more tyrannical and worse people? I don't know about worse, but possibly maybe the same. But it's hard to know for sure. It just depends on who, uh, uh, it depends on the degree to which we win culturally. If, uh, you know, I think that, that what, what did Ron Paul say? Abortion shouldn't be illegal. It should be unthinkable. Yeah. And so that, that's an idea that, that expands well beyond just the concept of abortion. So many things should be unthinkable to our culture that are becoming permissible, even though people generally don't like them. And so when it comes to, we, get, we elect, we elect uh, uh, Donald Trump, 
let's say in 2028, Vivek is the guy and he ends up winning and he's massively popular for whatever reason. And then we get, you know, with Donald Trump, you get the firing of a lot of bureaucrats, the relocation, although Trump has said what he wants to bolster the FBI headquarters or something. So who knows? But let's say Vivek does start crushing everything. Maybe at this point, culturally, we don't tolerate the existence of these institutions and then nothing replaces them. It just depends. I think the interesting thing to think about is why is it that in Russia, you can offer a bribe to a cop with no question and no fear. And then the United States, if it, no one would dare do it. The police officer has scruples. It's not just that he fears doing something wrong like that. Some cops will take bribes for sure. The average cop is like, yo, I'll go to jail. I'm scared. Like in Russia, the cop expects you to give him a bribe. There's a culture that's different from the United States to Russia as it pertains to what law, law enforcement is willing or capable to do, uh, capable of doing. And now in the United States, law enforcement scruples have been eroded. Now you've got cops in Texas who are willing to actually engage in human smuggling themselves, and they don't care why. They fear nothing. So as this continues to erode, if we don't change this mentality, you will get more and more law enforcement at behaving like they do in the collapsed former Soviet states, or the, 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 so, the former Soviet states, I'll just call them that. And what's, I mean, look, when you're at the point where cops are like, I will take money to engage in human smuggling, and facilitate crimes against this country, that's worse than accepting bribes. So, of course, the FBI is going to have massive corruption in it, the CIA, of course, the deep state, the, the intelligence agencies. What solves that is when that cop is terrified, he will go to prison for the rest of his life, and that's a guarantee. You know, you have this video from Taylor Hansen, Tenant Media, shout out, and the cop's yelling at him. The cop is worried he'll get caught. He just don't think, he doesn't think anyone will do anything about it because the criminals are running the clown show right now. I mean, Biden's in office. It's not going to happen to him. But if people find out, oh, then he's going to get, his neighbors are going to yell at him so he doesn't like being filmed. We need to make sure, one, we elect Donald Trump. And if, if something bad happens, you know, God forbid, someone like Vivek Ramaswamy, if not Vivek. And then we make sure each and every one of these law enforcement officers know, scruples are back, baby. We will find you. You will be criminally charged, and you will suffer the consequences for breaking the law. Then I don't care if we have an FBI or a CIA. I mean, if the FBI was doing what the FBI is on paper supposed to be doing, investigating federal crimes, like, let's talk about what the FBI should do. Human traffickers, arrested. Child traffickers, arrested. What are they really doing? Pull rope in a garage, investigation. <laughs> Donald Trump, orange man, bad, arrest his, his supporters who are bumbling around like, you know, on, on January 6th in D.C., a, a functioning, legitimate federal investigative bureau is fine. So what we need to do is, it's simple, win culturally, convince everybody law enforcement exists, you will be held accountable for your actions, there is no escaping it. Thank you much. Right on. Okay, one quick one, I guess, because hard Uno mas. Rapido, senor. Okay, I'll come back to the caucus here. Um, so I'm Joe, and two weeks ago, a canvasser for DeSantis came to my door She's from Virginia, and I. She's like, "What are you? Who are you going to vote for?" Stuff like that. And I said, uh, "Have you checked out Vivek?" And she's like, "Who?" Uh. She had no clue. I pulled open clips. She flipped. She had wow, a DeSantis, really? She had a Desantis shirt on, and she. We sat down on our steps, and we watched <laughs> clips. She's like. I really like this. The old switcheroo. And so what's interesting, though, so this is a little bit pro Vivek a little bit, is that there needs to be someone that is connecting with people on this level that isn't Trump. He's great. We'll vote for him. But he's coming in behind yeah. and scooping up people that don't have this Trump mentality of, no way, never, never, never. But he, tr Vivek, Vivek is actually selling the American dream better than Trump in the sense of his words, showing it with his family, his kids are there. It's a super sweet dream. And it's not Trump like, oh, they hate me. No, it's great. You know, I'll <laughs> still vote for him. But I'm saying that he, he's saying the, the, Amer the American dream, make America, make America great again. But a lot of these younger kids don't know what that means. Make America great 10 years ago, because that's when I was born, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So Vivek, Vivek is actually painting that picture really well. And if Vivek wasn't part of it, then it's just Trump. And then he, and then say he gets in or whatever, it ends with him. But well, we need somebody painting that picture, so then they, he scoops in all these other people that will actually go to Trump. I got, I got to say one thing that was pointed out. I can't remember who pointed this out to us. And they said Vivek can never win because... 
even people who know him can't pronounce his name right. <laughs> and the point there is not that his name is odd or whatever. It's that the amount of, like, the fact that, I mean, you called him Vivek, even though he's repeatedly said it's a vague like cake and he has to correct people all the time. It means that he's not pushing information enough to individuals to know enough about him. Donald Trump is unforgettable. His name is known by everybody. When Hillary Clinton made love Trump's hate signs, I thought she was, when I first saw it, I was like, she's telling me to love Trump? Mm -hmm. Like, Trump is hateful and I should love his actions? I don't understand. Mm. Oh, they meant love is better than hate. I didn't understand it because his name is just, it's always going to be the proper noun, paramount. Vivek is doing a lot of great things and he's spreading a really great message. But I think it is fair to say that one example of how he's not generating enough is that people don't even know how to say his name. It's unfortunate. It's an, it's, 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 I don't know, I don't, I don't know how you solve for that. But uh, I agree with you. I'm hoping he can be the plan B backbench. But uh, we do have a couple super chats that have pointed out after this election, Vivek is gone. And the idea is kind of like, what keeps Vivek relevant after this election if he's not chosen for a position in the Trump administration and is not frequenting the press? If he goes the podcast route, no, oh, that's great. You know, he'll be a podcaster. There's, there's not a path from there back to the presidency. So I'm not sure what his plan is, but I do think he's a smart enough guy to figure something out. The answer is going to have to be, if we do want Vivek as, you know, the up-and-coming young stars to look forward to in the future, Trump is going to have to embrace Vivek and offer him some kind of position. Or even if it's not like a direct cabinet position, it could be some kind of like business consulting position where Vivek is kept in the light so that, you know, going to the next cycle, he's there and, and, and in front of everyone. You know, he's a musician. I'd love to play. Uh, he's on keys. But we should get him on keys. Yeah, yeah for mm -hmm. something, some hot hit song, man, because I could see that guy just jamming, dude. Yeah. But uh, uh, I don't know if anyone else wanted to wrap this one up before we do our sign off. Anything else to say? Well, in that case, thank you all so much for hanging out for this uh, live in Iowa caucus show. We're looking at all of the other uh, uh, primary events, and we're trying to figure it out because I'm not going to say too much. March, our plan was for this big show. It may be changing, and I just want to say this. Pittsburgh, is it's an impossible city. I guess the leftist influence is too extreme, and the general thing that we're hearing is the venues. I'll be very careful how I say this without naming any individual group, but it would seem they're very terrified of the very active far-left contingent, and the, th the threat of violence is legitimate. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure that Pittsburgh will allow us to do the show because if the venues don't let us in, they don't let us in. Cleveland, Ohio is another option. Perhaps Akron, Ohio. Yeah, maybe Blossom Music Center. That place is hot. We'll see. I got arrested but, uh, in Pittsburgh. It's not a fun place to be in. Well, then we'll, you know, we'll see. But uh, at any rate, thank you all so much for, for hanging out watching the show. Smash the like button. Subscribe to the channel. Share the show with your friends. Head over to TimCast.com. Click join us because that's what makes this all possible. Shout out to Based Records, B-A-S-T-E. We could not have done this without you guys. So support their musicians. Go to basedrecords.com. Follow them on X, B-A-S-T-E, records uh, on, on X. Five times August, of course. Man, that guy's got so much amazing music. He's so mm -hmm. good. Yeah, he's amazing. You should definitely check him out. And uh, become a member because when you do become a member, you're basically allowing us to budget for events like this. And we definitely have a bunch planned. We're planning the RNC, not the DNC, but maybe we could do a DNC kind of event back in Milwaukee again or whatever. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Uh, so, yeah. Become a member at TimCast.com to support the show. You can follow the show at, Tim, at TimCast IRL. You can follow me personally at TimCast everywhere else. Luke, take it away. I'm doing a lot of really fun things on LukeUnfiltered.com. We're actually figuring, figuring out a way for members to actually earn some money. We do AMAs, in real life meetups, video reports, master classes, and you could even call in to uh, TheBestPoliticalShow.com. Only $8 a month. It means a lot to us when you sign up. The website is LukeUnfiltered.com. See you there right after this. My name's Seamus Coglin. I run a channel called Freedom Tunes. We do animated cartoons. If you all want to go over there and check that out, I'd appreciate it. There's also a chance I might be uh, appearing alongside Luke on his show uh, in the next there, week or there two. There might be some internal battles. We'll but but, but you, you got to plug your we'll, website, theworstpoliticalshow.com. We'll it's called, <laughs> no, 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 no. The it's, worst it's called freedomtunes.com. That's, you guys that's like actually to go a there good URL. Do you have that? No, it is my website. I, I bought theworstpoliticalshow.com. And it redirects to Seamus? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's good branding. I appreciate it. <laughs> You're you're freedomtunes.com. I look at thank you for the promotion. Say, yeah. say it. Say it. The Go worst, to freedomtunes.com and become show. a member. Please freedomtunes.com. Become a member. Thank the worst you all. Politicalshow.com.
it's, it's easier to remember. Oh, it really does. It redirects it does. to Seamus. It redirects wow. to Seamus. Yeah, it is real. You're welcome, Seamus. You're a good friend. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm uh, Ian Crossland. You guys follow me on the internet, and tomorrow I'll be interviewing my father. I'm very excited. We're just gonna we're gonna shoot the shit, see what happens. Peace. I want to find out. He was he was in the Navy during Vietnam. He's got an interesting perspective on all this stuff, so it'll be really fun. It'll be in the afternoon, by 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on YouTube. Check it out. I am uh, Phil That Remains on X. I'm Phil That Remains Official on Instagram. The band is All That Remains. You can follow us on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, Pandora, you know, the internet. <laughs> and I'm Josie. I'm the redheaded libertarian over on X. And I host a show called Spaces with Josie, which you can watch on X or on members only at TimCast.com. If you're a member, you can go watch that. And my handle is T-R-H-L official over on X. All right, everybody. Thank you all so much to everybody who came and uh, watched here in person and threw us questions. Thank you to everybody who's watching online. We are back tomorrow. Right now, we are going to get in our cars and drive on icy roads to get to a jet so we can make it back to the studio so I can record once again at like 8 or 9 a.m. It's going to be a lot of fun. Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you all tomorrow.